Okay, so I'm pretty sure focus experience mode means all other quests are lo are like you can't do them. Or like they cannot interfere with the main quest until like you're done with it. Which I think is really good. That means I don't get interrupted by like world quests while this is active. But okay, croissant it is. Let's go. I'm excited for the sword quest, honestly. It's Articino and like yeah. It's been a while since we get like a Harbinger world quest or sword quest. So yeah, looking forward to this quest. But yeah, let's begin. We meet at Porshan. Hey, oh, Traveler. Linny. Paimon. Oh, Paimon knows that voice. Over here. Hey, Twink Boy. Linny, it's been too long. It really hasn't. I just saw you in Lynette's hangout event. <laughs> To borrow one of the more popular turns of phrase at the moment, this appears to be quite the fated reunion. Running into you two out of the blue like this has really made my day. I certainly wasn't expecting it. You can say that again. <laughs> what brings you to Poisson? And where's your father? We're here for her. <laughs> Wait, Paimon's got it! You must be here for one of your magic shows, right? Um... Actually, we've run into a bit of trouble uh? on the home front, so father arranged for us to stay in Poisson for the time being. Poisson. <laughs> I love how French they go with that word. It's like all other words, they're just sounding like regular English. And then it's just Poisson. Or trees make a knees then at least cardinal. <laughs> oh yeah, see ya, Wonder. Hope to see you again in a later stream. I gotta go. The story quest is a bit sad at the end. I expect it to be like fully emotional. <laughs> I expect some, yeah, not so nice things to happen in this quest. So yeah, let's continue oh, forth. Yep, along with most of the other members of the House of the Hearth. You may have noticed Poisson seems a bit more... crowded than usual. Poisson means fish in French? Oh, I, I didn't know that. <laughs> so this is <laughs> so for French people, this place is literally called Fish. <laughs> That's funny. So you're saying nearly the entire organization has moved to Poisson? Sounds like you've run into way more than just a bit of trouble. What's really going on? Um... Well, since the two of you are so curious, oh, perhaps I can fill in the gaps. Hi, where did you come from, my lady? I mean, my father? Holy shit. <gasps> you scared Paimon half to death. <laughs> where did you come from? Father, you're here. Um, you know, <laughs> on second thought, maybe we don't need to know. It's all probably super confidential House of the Heart stuff, right? <laughs> we totally weren't trying to pry or anything. No need to be nervous. I could sense your genuine concern from your conversation just now. Of course, I can also understand your confusion. Sending so many Fatui here to Poisson, it's only natural that some might suspect an ulterior motive to be involved. Well, we are a little curious. We still have uh, our reservations about your organization. I'll say that. I understand. I'm well aware you've had your fair share of confrontations with the Fatui in the past, and I can't exactly guarantee that we'll remain on good terms in the future. <laughs> or in the next one hour, when I beat your ass in your, my boss fight. <laughs> As for right now, however, I would say we have little reason to be at odds, wouldn't you agree? The House of the Hearth could stand to be more open with those who have worked so closely with us in the past. As for the issue at hand, well, it hardly relates to any ulterior motive. To be frank, it all stems from a certain rumor circulating around the House of the Hearth. It's an internal matter. Hmm. A rumor? What sort of rumor? A rumor that a certain phantom child is hiding away in the House of the Hearth. A what? Phantom child? Some sort of ghost story, maybe? I feel like I'm getting chills already. A, a ghost story? A phantom child? Who, just hearing the name, is giving Paimon the creeps? A spirit that should have long ceased to exist is lurking in the shadows of the House of the Hearth. <laughs> Wait, what does that mean? What? You mean an actual ghost is what? So I decided to bring the children to Poisson before continuing to investigate the situation. I expect I should be able to track down the spirit fairly quickly. After that, it's just a matter of resolving the situation, if you will. Hmm. It shouldn't be much trouble at all. If you're curious, or if you still have some concerns, it might be advisable to stick around for a few days. 
I'm sure the children would be exceedingly pleased to welcome some visitors. Kind of odd, though. Moving your entire, like, house of her family here just because of a ghost rumor? Like, what? Lenny, I'll leave you to entertain our guests. I have some matters to attend to. Of course, father. Oh, bye. Fairly well, Cappuccino. Hmm. <gasps> I couldn't help but feel intimidated during that conversation with the knave. Now that she's gone, I could, <laughs> it feels like I can finally breathe easy again. Yeah, honestly, <laughs> any scene of the Keen around, just, yeah, just ups the intensity by like 10 times. She also suggested that we stick around for a few days. But why? Hmm. It has long been a dream of mine to invite you to our home and introduce you to my other siblings. I should probably say this, but for those of you who are confused, this is my alt account where I picked Ether. So if you're wondering why, why I'm not Lumine this time around, that's why. <laughs> you're quite well known in the organization already. A lot of people have been talking about you, especially after everything with the prophecy. If you're willing, why don't you stay a while and have a little chat with us? Mm. All right. We don't have anything else to do right now anyway. But let's be clear. We're just going to be there as guests, okay? Don't get any funny... Oh, wait a second. For your guests, that probably means we'll be treated to oh, for fuck's sake. food, right? <laughs> it's always food on the brain with you, isn't it, Paimon? Of course. During our stay in Poisson, we've been helping out the locals with some fishing. We bring in quite the bounty every day. In fact, today is the perfect chance for me to show you what I can do in the kitchen. Let's go. I'll take you to where we're staying. Hmm, when the how when the her flame goes out. Ominous title. <laughs> Be a house, quote unquote guest. <laughs> Actually, I'm wondering, can we find Linny Lad for many around? <laughs> well, they say Poisson is packed, but I've barely seen any people here. <laughs> like, wait a minute, wait. What do you mean it's packed? I, I'm I'm not seeing nobody. Unless you mean they're on the ship. Hang on, let me go and fly over there. We rented this house from one of the locals to use as a temporary base. I'll come back later and tidy up a bit. After that, it should be all ready for you to stay in tonight. Awesome, thanks! So, where are we off to now? Well, when I happened to run into you two earlier, I was actually in the middle of distributing some supplies. With this many people staying in Poisson, we have to bring in outside supplies every now and then. I should probably make sure the rest of these provisions get delivered, otherwise people might start to get antsy. Okay, we'll come with! There are all sorts of rumors about your organization floating around out there. Paimon's not sure if she could even take a wild guess as to what's true and what's not. But now that we finally have the chance to see a day in the life of the house, we can take a good look at how you operate! Well, you're more than welcome to come along. Just follow me. Hmm. I'm still trying to piece together why, um... Why Arlequina would let us stay here. It's kind of odd. Hmm. Also, yeah, where, where's the other gang at? Where's, uh, Framie Boy and, uh, Lynette? Oh, these are the House of Fur members. Wait, are they? No, these look like Poisson guys. Lenny! We're finally here! The supplies. I'm assuming you've... Brought them with me? Yep. Here you go. Never mind, I think these are Poisson guys. Uh... Hello? Something caught your eye? <laughs> Bro, why are you looking at me like that? Uh, it's the Traveler in Paimon! Ah! <laughs> personal space! No way! Oh no, I think the kids are House of Earth and... No, actually, maybe they're all House of Earth, I don't know. <laughs> it's hard to tell with these NPCs. Oh shit, no! <laughs> don't, don't swarm us, please! One at a time, please! Don't crowd around them all at once! We don't want to scare off our guests now, do we? Oh, it's alright! <laughs> Gotta say, Paimon didn't realize we were this famous! <laughs> yeah, especially with the fucking House of Herbs, like, what? <laughs> Aren't we supposed to be enemies with the Fatui? <laughs> of course! Father and Linny have told us so much about you! Father told us about how you helped Linny. According to her, you're a trustworthy friend, and as far as she's concerned, that's pretty much <laughs> the highest compliment we've ever heard her give. 
As you can imagine, everyone's been very curious about you. <laughs> she's barely said anything nice at all, but that's like the only good thing she said, so... Hey, it must mean something. <laughs> I heard the Traveler is so strong that he can move a mountain with his bare hands. Okay, I wouldn't go that far now. <laughs> I heard Paimon eats so much that she can clean out the entire pantry at Hotel Tabor in just three days! Now that, I think I can testify to. <laughs> and now I think that's actually a true fact. Wait a second! That's the rumor you heard about Paimon? Oh, not cool at all! Paimon's also a bit of a stretch. <laughs> oh, wait! When guests visit, you're supposed to give them gifts and stuff, right? Primos, please. I ran out of them <laughs> while summoning Arlecchino. <laughs> something like that. Besides, we don't have anything to give to you. Come on, we insist. I can give you some of my new potions. Potions? Just take your poison. And by that, I mean medicine or actual poison. What? <laughs> um, okay. Wow. <laughs> Excuse me? I mean, this is a house of hearths. This should be probably normal for them, but what? <laughs> the kids offering me to like drugs or met or actual poison. <laughs> what? Huh? Or maybe Shaplo can teach you guys about stealth! He's super good at it! He's never been caught! Yeah, I forget you guys are supposed to be like for two operatives too. <laughs> and you go on missions uh, and whatnot. Ah, now that's not a bad idea. I know you usually prefer to fight head on, but it never hurts to expand your bag of tricks, right? When it comes to eliminating your enemies, staying quiet can go a long way. Trust me, I would know. I was poisoned not too long ago, yeah. and I'm still dealing with the after <laughs> That's not something you should say just casually. I before, but I could still give you some pointers. Yeah, yeah, I was just poisoned not not too long ago. <laughs> I'm still working through it. It's just that's not something you announce just casually. Um, wait. Uh, <laughs> when you said gifts, I didn't think you meant poison. Uh, but yeah. tactics. I was thinking more along the lines of yeah, food and money, not this. But though are the best things we can give you. You don't like them? I mean, you could give me a gun. <laughs> I would love to see a traveler with like a gun in his abilities one of his days. Not the water gun that he does in the hydro one, but an actual gun. Ooh, how about this? Tell me the name of someone who really annoys you, and we'll teach him a lesson for you. Oh sure, go get, go get Paimon right now. <laughs> nah. Did they just suggest just keep coming in one after the other? You're getting right, a bit overwhelmed. Selwar, I think that's enough suggestions for now. When it comes to being a good host, it's the thought that counts. You don't need a physical gift to make our guests happy. In fact, pestering them with suggestion after suggestion might make them more annoyed than anything. I would say your enthusiasm has certainly gotten across. Really? Absolutely. We definitely feel the love. Awesome! It's been so long <laughs> the since we've guests to play with. If there's anything you need, just let us know. Yeah, we certainly feel the love of you guys <laughs> suggesting the deadliest tactics known to man <laughs> to teach us. Yeah, especially if it's poison or something. Okay, I girl. All sorts of potions for Calm that. down, I have no need for poison unless I need one, but oh, okay. <clears throat> well, we'll talk to you all later. We've still got supplies to distribute. Yeah, I don't, I don't see us having a use of poison, unless I'm done with Paimon. Alright, see you later! You're not gonna lie, I thought the House of Heart members would be like in Futubi attire. <laughs> Yes, completely normal in the house of Herf. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> Scared you, did it? That kind of talk comes with being part of the house of the hearth. Yep. When Foltz was really young, he strangled all of his ah, cats. What Just the? Just out of curiosity. Eh. He was labeled hey, a yo. problem child and was abandoned by his family. Hey, yo, what the f- Nah, dude, we should ki leave that kid for the streets and strangled the family pets. Please tell me they're still alive. Yeah, I would not want to keep that kid in my house either. Elwar has an unnatural obsession with potions. Father has forbidden her from trying all the different concoctions she comes up with, but she still tries to test them in secret. You really have to keep an eye on that one. Oh boy. I bet dinner time with her is really fun. Chaplot is around my age. 
While I'm mainly responsible for collecting intelligence, he handles surveillance. He's very passionate about his work and has no reservations about taking on some very difficult missions. Okay, he sounds the most normal out of everybody so far. I know you two probably aren't used to that kind of talk, but I can promise you they only had the best of intentions. Things like stealth tactics and developing different poisons, they really mean a lot to them. They were just trying to share the best of what they could offer, that's all. I mean, I can see some of them being like worthy members, but that the, the kid strangling his pets, the family pets, uh, mm, yeah, ooh, I would, yeah, I would not want that kid to be my child. Wow, the Traveler and Paimon, I finally got to meet them in person. Hmm, they don't really seem as intimidating as you hear in the stories. I bet I can kill them with, with like with one hand. They'd probably get along really well with filial. If only they got here sooner. Philly oil. Yeah, no. You know what? I'm good. I'm good. I don't want to meet any more House of Hearth members. Yeah, I feel like out of all the House of Hearth people, probably L Linny, Lynette, Friendly are like the most normal out of all of them. Filial, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> That's not something you casually just tell me, like, Lenny, like, yeah, he strangled his family pets and now he's abandoned. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, you just your everyday problem child, you know? Just, nah. Thanks. Oh, the, oh this filial. are these two? <gasps> Outsiders? Ah, allow me to introduce you. This is the Traveler and Paimon. Oh, you're the famous duo I've been hearing so much about. It's nice to meet you. I heard you've traveled to all sorts of places. Is that true? Oh yeah, five regions and also like three sub-regions. Of course! We're making our way all across to that! Oh, good for you! <laughs> What's that? Oh, good for you! I can't do that! I'm jealous! You must be pretty familiar with Fontaine by now then. Have you seen the new opera that started running recently? I think it's called... The 4,000 Thieves? Oh, this is the first we've heard of it. It seems like it's going to be <laughs> Actually, fantastic. I don't think I've ever, we haven't even seen a single opera from in this what in Fontaine yet. From the posters, anyway. You should definitely check it out if you have the time. Oh, and there's The Blind Maiden, too. That one is supposed to have audience interaction. Seems pretty interesting. Okay, at least these guys are a bit more normal. <laughs> After this mission is over, I think I'll go get a manicure. Oh, uh, maybe I should dye my hair. Hmm, wonder how much it'll cost. Um, is it just Paimon, or do these two seem much yeah. easier? Yeah, <laughs> exactly, get exactly what I'm saying. It looks like the House of the Hearth has some normal members after all. <laughs> uh, yeah, glad not everybody's crazy here. I heard that. Oh. No, you didn't. Oh. Uh. Oops. <laughs> I'm guessing you're referring to Foltz and the others. <laughs> yeah, we're definitely not all like them. I bet those crazies are practically foaming at the mouth right now. <laughs> I'm sure they just can't wait to get back to Snezhnaya to carry out the plan. That's enough, Filial. The plan? The plan? Elaborate on this plan. Ah, <sighs> don't talk about family members behind their back, right? <sighs> Whatever. Let's go. Um, guess this is goodbye then. If you ever have some time, we should go see the opera together. Maybe. That's it, and that is if I don't get creeped out more by this house of her place. <sighs> well, that's it for the supplies. We should probably head back as well. Well, they didn't seem too happy with each other. Seems like there could be something more going on here. Hmm, we should observe for now. It's better not to pry. We should observe for now. You're right. We're only here as guests after all. Oh, uh, Linny's getting super far ahead. Come on, let's catch up. Oh, damn, we're just going through a full tour of Poisson again, I see. <laughs> all right, do, go to the temporary accommodations. <laughs> uh, where? Oh, down. <laughs> So, 
What do you think of the members you've met so far? Uh, they certainly got a lot of personality, and by personality I mean crazy gimmicks. <laughs> well, Father is always encouraging us to be strong-willed and independent. So if there's one thing we've got, it's people who aren't afraid to speak their mind. Then again, I guess I'm not really surprised. This is Arlo Kino, after all, who buried a pet spider. <laughs> she had a pet spider, by the way. <laughs> well, I should probably get cooking. Wanna join? Of course! Then let's head out and... Uh-huh. Uh? Fremine? What are you doing here? Hey, Fremie boy! There you are. Where's Lynette? Uh, well, um... Uh? Oh, right. In the trailer, he's, um, Frammy Boy said, um, he was hiding the person Arlequino's looking for. Fremine, nice to see you again! <laughs> Are they in that box? Oh, uh, you too. I heard you're here as guests of House of the Hearth. Welcome. We were just going to make some food. Why don't you come along? I could use some help in the kitchen, and I seem to remember you mentioning you wanted to make seafood soup for the Traveler and Paimon. Mm, seafood soup? Oh, Paimon is drooling already. <laughs> Were you looking for something just now, Fremine? Maybe I can help. Uh, it's nothing. I just wanted to see if there were any extra supplies. Yeah, we've got some left over. What do you need? Some food and water, and some clean cloth, if possible. No problem. Give me a second here. Food, water... Uh. Wait a minute. What do you need all of those for? Uh. You're not on any missions as far as I'm aware, and you were just going to come eat with us. So what's this all about? Oh. He's feeding the person he's hiding, I think. I... Uh, I thought I'd grab an extra portion because I get hungry at night. <laughs> Could be because I'm growing, you know? And... Fremine, uh, I love you, but you're a terrible liar. <laughs> Fremine, you remember what I told you? You're not lying. Yeah. Your lying skills still need some work. Tell me what's going on. Is it really bad enough that you have to keep it from your own brother? Um, maybe it'll be better if we gave them some space. Uh, mm. huh. This is the first time I've seen that kind of look on your face. Whatever happened, does it have something to do with father? <sighs> yes. Just... Uh, follow me. Yep, I guess we're coming along after all. Figure out what Fremne is hiding. Oh boy. <laughs> Keep in mind, whatever happens here is what leads us to the ass beating that uh, Arlequina is going to give us later. Oh wait, who's this girl? You're back. Oh, and you've brought some friends with you this time. Who the heck? Okay, you're very different from the other NPC kids. Hello, my name's Linny. I grew up in the House of the Hearth. And you are? Hi, Linny. I'm also a child of what? the House of the Hearth. Wait a minute. Just like you. Wait. Is that... Hang on a minute. Isn't that the kid that was in Arlequino's animated short? If, if not, then she looks very similar to her. Hang on, let me find it here. Oops. Hang on a minute. Yeah, hang on. Song Burning Embers. Yeah, wait. Hang on. It is her. Look, okay, uh, I'll bring it up here for you guys just for a comparison. Th this is that kid. I thought she died ages ago. How the heck? Okay, this just got ten times more interesting. Whoa, what? <laughs> How? You can call me Clairvy. Clairvy? I think that's also a name that was said in the trailer, too. Clairvy? It's nice to meet you. Oh, no wonder. Phantom Child. No wonder she's calling them a Phantom Child because she's supposed to be dead, but for some reason. <laughs> what? How? Does that name ring any bells, Lenny? 
Yeah, this quest just got ten times more interesting. No, not at all. That's not a name we have on our roster, I'm sure of it. What I'm not sure of, though... Yep, yeah, she's even got the, uh... how she managed to sneak in. The belt flowers, like, on, on her necklace. She must be the phantom child father's been searching for. Yep. From the looks of it, I'm guessing you were the one that found her, Fremini. You, uh... Haven't told father, have you? Why, though? No, I haven't told anyone. I've just been... Keeping her hidden. Right under her nose? Like, out here? For how long? Hmm. About half a month. Now. Half a month? How the f- So ever since we got to Poisson, then, do you have any idea what you're doing? I know what I'm doing. Really? Because from where I'm standing, it looks like you're hiding the very person Father has been trying to find. <sighs> if Father finds out about this, everyone involved is going to be punished. You know the rules of the house, Fremenet. I know you do. Father doesn't tolerate any form of betrayal. Hmm. So why are you doing this? I've thought it through. And I just can't hand her over like that. Hmm. Linny, don't you remember last year? Sheplo nearly died after getting poisoned during that one mission. He wasn't able to get back before the poison started taking effect. And not a single person was there to help him. That night, while I was sleeping... I heard a voice telling me to go save him. I opened my eyes, but I couldn't find the source of the voice. I thought maybe I was just hearing things, but I went to look for him anyway. Luckily, I got there with enough time to save his life. That feeling of being haunted, of hearing voices, it's happened many times in the House of the Hearth. I'm sure you've noticed. And what, you think this voice is her? So what you're saying is... That was her? She was the one who spoke to you that night? Unless there are other spirits roaming around the House of the Hearth, I don't think there's any other possibility. If Claire V were our enemy, it wouldn't matter whether she was a spirit or an actual child. I would have acted without a second thought, because that's what Father ordered us to do. But she's been living with us, Helping us from the shadows all this time. I think that makes her family. Hmm. I couldn't just hand her over to be dealt with. Not when there's so much we still don't know. So what's your plan then? You can't keep her here forever. Someone is bound to find out eventually. I haven't thought that far yet. I don't want to disobey an order from father. But I also don't want to put Clairvy in danger. We don't know. Here's the thing: we don't even know what Arlequino wants to do with Claire V, anyways. Assuming it is her that she's looking for, like, yeah, maybe Arlequino wants to adopt her or something. But hmm. Come with me. There are a couple things I'd like to say to you in private. Also, yeah. But again, she's supposed to be dead. <laughs> Those two sure care a lot about each other. <laughs> well, they got a funny way of showing it. From where Paimon was floating, it sure seemed like they were about to bite each other's heads off. No way. They have a really deep bond. I could tell right away, because I also have a friend like that. Oh, hmm, do tell. I just don't know how long that kind of bond can last. What do you mean? The darkness in the house runs deeper than you can imagine. Ugh. No one can get out alive. I'm sorry, Liddy. Dude, don't stare at me those creepy I really eyes. I didn't mean to drag anyone else into this. Oh, really? You didn't mean to? Because I, for one, wish you did. Huh? What do you mean? You know, when we were younger, you didn't call me Linny. You called me brother, just like Lynette. We grew up together, the three of us. We were all orphans, all rescued by father. Of all the siblings in the House of the Hearth, I think our bond was the closest. Later on, when you started calling me Linny, I wasn't actually surprised. After all, Lynette and I are related by blood. Hmm. We've had to depend on each other to survive long before we joined the house. Linny, I... The darkest and most difficult moments of my life happened before you and I had ever met. I'm sure that's true for you as well. 
even so, Fremenet, we've stood by each other for all these years now, and to me, that means more than blood. You and Lynette are the most important people in my life. No one can replace you. So I won't let you face anything alone. Not if I can help it. Oh. Oh, looks like things are getting kind of heated between Lenny and Fremenet. Eh? Maybe we should go check on them. Or maybe we should go take a peek out and see if, there's if anybody's followed us, you know? Just saying. Oh, it's raining. I should put my clothes away. Raining? There we were, indoors. Also, hey, Arlequina's found the child. Let's go ahead and... <laughs> yes, we found her. Let's let's deal with her immediately. Huh. Looks like she's not here either. Interesting. She has, like, a bunch of dialogue for just walking around the camp. Wait. She's, like... She's, like, facing in and out of reality. The fuck? Okay, she really is a phantom child. The hell? Wait, are you going to dis disappear again? Hang on, let me see this. No? Okay, I think she's just done moving around. What the heck? What is up with this child? <laughs> oh, wait a minute, Fremenet. You're not crying, are you? Is everything all right? Everything's fine. Aw. Thanks for asking. Well, we're all friends here, right? We've been through so much together, so if there's anything we can do to help, just say the word. It's just a small family dispute. It's not something our guests should trouble themselves with. In fact... It might be better if your stay ended here. But sometimes having guests around come, can come in handy, just saying. Uh, what are you getting at, Traveler? I'm saying we help, Paimon. Also, Claire V's gone again. Where the fuck? When guests are around, families are often on their best behavior. And any disputes are less likely to escalate. That's what you're trying to say, isn't it? Exactly. I think it'll be better if we stick around as a whole. I... Just... Thank you. I was really hoping to keep you out of it. But even if I could think of some other reason to turn you away, I'm not sure I could convince you. I know things could turn dangerous, so I promise you this. From now on, I'll protect you like my life depends on it. Me too. Oh. Well, I love these siblings so much. <laughs> If we don't I'm gonna miss them when we like head off to Natlin. Then our only other option is to solve the mystery of her identity before Father is able to track her down. That means finding out where she came from and what she's doing here. Then we can send her on her merry way and pretend like none of this ever happened. I've tried that already. And? And... Nothing. I tried taking her somewhere really far away, but after some time, she just reappeared. She even came with us all the way to Poisson. Hmm. It seems like wherever the house is, she follows. Hmm. I don't know much about spirits. Do you two have any ideas? Well, I mean, there were the spirits you saw on Surumi Island, but this is completely different. I... let's see here. Oh, I, uh, Paimon remembers hearing something like, if you fulfill a spirit's last wish before they die, they'll let go of whatever's keeping them here and return to the ley lines. Oh, it's just that Paimon doesn't really remember where she heard that, so... Mm. So, it's not guaranteed to work or anything. Well, sounds like it's worth a shot. Guess that means we should go ask her about her wish. But first, Fremenet, I need you to promise me something. What is it? I need you to promise me that this will stay between the two of us. We're the masterminds behind this whole thing. No one else gets involved. Can you do that for me? Of course. I promise. All right. 
Then let's seal the promise just like when we were kids. Fist bump on three. <laughs> Fist bump. Ready? One, two, three. Bam. Bro fish. I swear. Hey, Lynette, where did you come from? What the fuck? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> the no. fucking sound effects. <laughs> Kitty, where were you hiding the fuck? Whoa. <laughs> you scared me. The fuck? Where'd you come from? But what a surprise. <clears throat> what brings you here, dear sister? <laughs> uh, she's, uh, kind of, uh, she's pissed. And, uh, when exactly did you get here? <laughs> I promise you aren't doing anything bad. Uh-oh. I just gotta, like, fucking punch him right in the face. You're an idiot, brother. <laughs> um... And you too, Fremine. <laughs> I fucking love Lynette. Uh... God, just you how... three travelers. Ah! And you four, Paimon. <laughs> I swear, we had nothing to do with this. Wait, what did we do? I've seen Clairvy around the House of the Hearth before. I hadn't seen her in Poisson, so I figured she must not have come with us. But it turns out, you were just hiding her. <laughs> I love how bloodless that is sometimes. Like, I, I fucking love her. <laughs> I heard you talking about your plan. Rather than steering clear of the situation, I'd rather fully join in. Nope, oh, cat's in the bag now. Hey, actually, the little cat's out of the bag. If you don't agree, I'll have no choice but to report everything back to father. Simple as that. <sighs> You're not giving us much wiggle room here, Lynette. <laughs> she do he doesn't want to have any. Well, I guess we're all in this together, then. After we talk to Claire V, we'll figure out our next move. So I was I was actually going to say, like, it, it's, this is involving the house of the earth. Where's Lynette? And then magically, she just appears. <laughs> There's no time to lose. Let's go. Well, <laughs> I guess, uh, I guess we're all part of this together now. Ooh, lasagna. I'm full. Thank you for bringing me this food, you guys. Um, she said she's full, but the food doesn't look like it's even been touched. Uh, well, she's a spirit. She can't actually eat. That's right. Based on what I've been able to observe, it doesn't seem like Claire V can interact with the physical world at all. Also, yeah, she's, like, teleporting and whatnot, and, like, phasing in and out of reality. And that's another thing, too. Still, when she's presented with food, she'll always linger around it for a good little while. Maybe, in her mind, she really is eating those things. Also, yeah, Lena has seen Clairvy around before, but never reported it to Barlacino. Like, hmm. Does she know that she has already passed away? I've tried to ask her, but she didn't answer. My guess is that she's just as confused as we are. Or... Maybe she couldn't understand the question at all. Clairvy, if you've got some time, I'd like to ask you a few questions. Sure. Oh, another new friend. Hi, I'm Clairvy. Hello. Clairvy, how did you join the House of the Hearth? Huh? Isn't it the same for everybody? The knave brings you here, and then you can't leave. Ooh. She's probably referring to the previous knave, huh? It's just that... Your name... It's not on the roster. And I've never seen you before. The roster? Oh, I get it now. I think there might be some things you don't know about this place. The people in charge... They're not as nice as they look. They say they keep a roster, hmm. but it's not complete. There are a lot of people who aren't on it, and never will be. Ugh. In this house, some people are family, and other people are just test subjects. Those kinds of people aren't ever going to get a place on the roster, unless... It's the roster of people who've been executed. Man, imagine imagine it's something you playing this, but you've never seen the animated short. You would just get a completely different experience. Which I think is kind of cool, honestly. Wait, does, 
does that mean the name... She... Is there anyone that can vouch for you? Mm. Perry. She's my best friend. She's the only one I trust in this place. Perry? Wait. Wait, wait, wait. Is that... Perry? Is that... Is that Arlequino's real name? Hold up a minute. <laughs> Have either of you heard of that name before? No. God, imagine fucking Nave Arlequino. Like, like it's such a badass name, and then her real name just turns out to be Perry. <laughs> That's kind of funny if he, if that is true. Me neither. Claire V. Perry. Neither of those names are on the roster. But it seems like she's telling the truth. Either that, or this kid's already got a bag of tricks bigger than mine. Hmm. Maybe we should try a different approach. Claire V, do you have a wish? A wish? It can be anything you want. Just imagine. It's your birthday, you're blowing out the candles, and your wish is... <laughs> to kill people! Just imagine just something fucked up. To... To go outside. Where the sun can find me. That's... It? Hmm. Well, that sounds easy enough. Um, can we just go to the surface? The darkness in the house runs deeper than you can imagine. Hmm. No one can get out alive. What does she mean by that? Things can't be this simple. Okay, time to divide and conquer. Listen up. I've got a plan. I'll try and find a way to use basic illusory magic to take Claire V outside and bring her somewhere with sunlight. Um, will that even work? Will magic even work on the on the on spirits? Lynette, try and find the list of executions that Claire V was talking about and see if her name is on it. Fremine, you stay in Poisson. We can't be the only ones who've had run-ins with Claire V. I need you to collect intel on everything she's said and done. Understood. I'll try my best. What about us? What should we do? I really appreciate your willingness to help, but this is a family matter. I don't want to drag you in too deep. It's, it's too, too late risky. for that now. It's it's too late to say, yeah, we don't need your help, buddy. Let me think. Since Father considers you to be guests, maybe you could stick by her side for a little while. You don't need to do anything except keep up some nice, casual conversation. Oh, okay, so we're just the distraction for Arlequino. Ah, Paimon gets it. You want us to distract him? Yeah. How should we contact you? I'll give you a magic bird. Oh. If father suspects something, all you need to do is release it when she's not looking, and it'll alert me that something's wrong. <laughs> we're just going to keep our little, this little birdie in our hand? Of course. That's only as a last resort. If Father doesn't seem to notice us, there's no need to make contact. We'll reconvene here tonight after all said and done. If the worst case scenario happens and we're discovered, just tell Father everything. We're not going to let our guests get punished for our own actions. That's where we draw the line. Be careful. You too. Okay, this is where we part. Father should be at the beach nearby. Hey, meeting Arlequino on the beach. I really hope this goes well. No, it has to go well. <laughs> Otherwise, we That's all the die. Only way this can get resolved. Kind of like the way they're doing this. <laughs> Gives us the reason that, yeah, to talk to Arlequino while you know, yeah, because this is this is her quest. Well, also, yeah, these guys are doing something on the sidelines. Claire V, I'd like to take you somewhere. Is that okay with you? <laughs> sure. Where are we going? <laughs> We're going upstairs, where father is, which is probably a bad idea in hindsight. Can I actually find uh, Fremini and uh, Lynette around? Yeah, I want to just look around the, the, herf, the house of her for a second here. See if we can find any... Uh... Uh, I'm not seeing them right now. Yeah, they're probably just not here. But 
But the interesting way this quest is set up, because that's definitely Articino's like dead friend. So yeah, that begs the question: Why is she back? And also, what does Articino plan to do with her? Hmm. Okay, yeah. If, uh, Premine, Lynette, I don't see them. So let's just head on up. Also, don't run out of stamina, because for some reason the stamina drains so quickly when you use a charge attack, and you can drown from that. Well, not in Fontaine, but <laughs> and everywhere else, yeah. Oh! Hey! Is that my boy? Hey, child, you're back! Holy shit, I thought I would never see you again! It's the knave! And... child! Damn, you you recovered quick! <laughs> Holy shit! Hey, aren't you supposed to be in Snezhnaya recuperating? What are you still doing in Fontaine? Oh, it's you two. I didn't expect to run into you here. <laughs> hmm? Okay, so he hasn't made a 100% recovery. <laughs> I was unconscious for quite a while after the fight in the Primordial Sea. After I woke up, I realized I was being taken back to Snezhnaya, and well... I couldn't have that now, could I? Not when I've still got unfinished business here in Fontaine. Right, you mentioned that. So, I mustered up all my strength and made the journey back on my own. Also, yeah, child, your vision, did you get it back? What sort of unfinished business are we talking here? It has to do with Skirk, my master. Oh. I really wanted to meet up with her, but by the time I got back, she had already left. I still have so many questions for her. Without any other leads, all I could do was ask the knave to help me track her down. She must have left behind some traces from her time in Fontaine. Please, okay. I hope this sets up like a child act two story quest because I really want to know. One, like these are the unanswered questions for Fontaine. One, why does it? Why did his vision stop working in Fontaine? Two, why did the Ortrice Mechanese Denelis Cardinal declare him guilty? And yeah, three. The th the thing with Skirk. What's up with that? <laughs> I, I I'm just begging for like a child act two story quest. He's yeah. Oh. He okay. needs one. So, have you found any clues? Unfortunately, no. While the House of the Hearth is adept at collecting all manner of intelligence, certain existences can still manage to escape our purview. Basically, unless Master feels there's a need to meet with me, she's not going to be found. Hmm. I wonder when Skirk is going to be playable, by the way. She's also one of the characters I'm very much looking forward to. But that problem has an easy fix. I just need to become stronger, and then... <laughs> <laughs> and then just be, fight the way out of a... Uh, yeah, just fight something strong, and then eventually she'll appear. Uh, Paimon thinks she should focus on getting better first. <laughs> the worst of it is over. It's all thanks to that one kid from the House of the Hearth. Elwar, I think her name was. She gave me a bunch of random potions to drink. Oh. They didn't go down easy. <laughs> I hope we didn't drink poison in the process. Kills all over. But they really did help speed up my recovery. And that's good, because it looks like I really do have to head back this time. The old man's been putting the pressure on me. He sent someone to tell me I'm needed for some sort of project. Uh, old man. All right, the rooster. I think... Project Stooja? Yeah, what is that project? <laughs> project Stooja, what a name. Actually, what does Stooja mean? I, I believe one of you guys told me, but I kind of forgot what it meant. Yeah, that's the one. Uh, I heard Regrater's involved too. Ooh. I'm not looking forward to having to listen to all his monologuing, that's for sure. <laughs> hey, maybe you could think of a way for me to stay in Fontaine for a little longer. Regrater, that's that's the evil Baiju, right? That's the guy who's like super rich and uh, Yelan stole his coat. Helping Linny and the others brush up on their fighting skills would be far more interesting. <laughs> if you and I could spar, that would be even better. Fucking hell. I've been waiting for a chance to see you go all out. <laughs> Child, just always jumping at the opportunity to have a fight. Just fucking hell, this bloodthirsty maniac. And what a sweet little daydream that is. But I also have a role to play in all this. I'll be leaving Fontaine shortly as well. Besides, considering how little they see fit to step outside the homeland, being called on to return to Snezhnaya by such illustrious dignitaries. What a great honor. Wouldn't you agree? 
<laughs> Honor in quotation marks. Hmm. Stuva means severe winter. Okay. So, psh. so doesn't really reveal what the plan is, but all right. <laughs> One I could do without, I'd say. Uh, is it just Paimon? Or does it kind of seem like they're... Just casually trash-talking their colleagues behind their back. <laughs> so, dear guests of the House of the Hearth, to what do I owe the visit? Um, well, we just... Uh... Want to learn more about you, and also the house as a whole. Right! We're super close to Linny and the others, but we still don't know much about you! Yeah. <laughs> Is that so? Introductions have already been made, have they not? Well, first of all, can you tell us what the what the fucking Sarita's planning? Can you please tell us? We've been waiting like five updates to learn. Oh, uh, well, you see, there's only so much you can learn about someone from a short introduction. At least tell us something a little extra, like, mm. why do you call yourself father? How about we ask some more important questions and say, like, why are you stealing all the gnosis? What's up with that? Why are you doing it? Because we still don't have n no clue. Huh, good question. I'd also like to know. The fact that you have to ask tells me our intelligence work has been quite successful. Telling you the answer to that question would only serve to undermine that success. And we can't have that. Now can we? Huh? Spoken like a true diplomat. That was some expert sidestepping right there. <laughs> well... If there's nothing else, I think I'll take my leave. I still have a small matter to resolve at home. Uh... uh, uh wait, don't go! Uh... Oh. <laughs> yeah, we're... This is acting sus. She's definitely gonna suspect something's up. The knave leaves right now. She's sure they're running to Linny and Clarevy. Should I release the bird Linny gave us? No, we should try to get her talking about something else first. How about the house for her? What does the organization mean to you? <laughs> I'd also like to hear the answer to this. Yeah, <laughs> fucking child, my fucking wingman. <laughs> so glad he's here. I've met some of the members of your organization, and they all seemed like really good kids. They actually reminded me of Tonya and Tusser. All right, yeah, when are we going to see them again? I want to know Tonya. <laughs> I, I feel like Tonya is going to be a playable character. I don't I, try, I don't have any proof to support that, but I, I feel like she might be. Which, by the way... If you ever betray them, I'm just letting you know, I won't let you off easy. Ooh. And why would I betray them? Well, you've already betrayed the House of the Hearth once, haven't you? Ooh. At least, that's what I heard. Oh, right, by killing the previous knave, yeah. Oh, shit, yeah, this zoom-in is, uh, ooh. <laughs> something's, uh, something, oh, God, he's like boiling anger in there. Uh oh. <laughs> okay, okay, I admit. That's just what the old man told me. The rooster, I mean. Yeah, the rooster, okay, confirmed. The nape betrayed the house of the hearth. So, does that mean what Claire we said was true? Does the nave really treat her children like test subjects? Wait, did you really do something bad to those kids? Never mind what I've done. I'm more curious as to what the mighty rooster had to say. Yeah. Care to enlighten me? Ah, well, nothing much. Just some stuff about you taking out many other members of the House of the Hearth, and even going so far to attack your own family. Oh, jeez. Hmm. I see. Oh, based on your reaction, I'm guessing it's all a bunch of lies. I mean, pro <laughs> I mean, Arlequina has, like, a pretty good poker face. Maybe it could be true, and she's just... Keeping it up. <laughs> Hardly. I don't appreciate his particular turns of phrase, but I suppose he didn't say anything untrue. Oh dear. Although, it would be more accurate to say that there is a certain level of prejudice involved, but I don't intend to clear that up just yet. Prejudice has a funny way of concealing the real truth behind certain things, an attribute that I find to be quite advantageous. Call yourself a Fontanian, for example, and people will assume all sorts of things, when the real truth is that this is simply the land where I was raised. Hmm. Huh? You're not actually from Fontaine? But then, why did you try to help out with the prophecy and everything? Oh. Oh. Hmm. 
Okay, maybe then she was Snezhnaya. She isn't Snezhnaya then. Weird, so... Yeah, I, I always assumed Alakina was, like, Fontanian. And, like, grew up in Fontaine. I was, like, born in Fontaine, but... Hmm, never mind. She was only raised here. Hmm. I was trying to protect the children born in Fontaine. Claiming that I myself was a Fontanian simply made it easier to operate. People would hardly suspect a fellow Fontanian of having any ulterior motives. Who wouldn't want to save their homeland after all? The Primordial Sea wouldn't have any effect on me, but it would have caused great harm to the House of the Hearth. Well, you wanted extra information, didn't you? There you go. I hope that satisfied your curiosity. So much for learning anything else but about her betrayal. She probably revealed that other secret in... Uh, she probably only revealed that other secret in order to change the subject. It seems like she's trying to avoid talking about her past. So, you stayed in Fontaine for the kids. I guess I was wrong to believe you'd betray them. Apologies. Looks like I was holding on to some prejudices myself. Good. Like I said, I like it when others have misconceptions of me. Hmm. You're a very interesting woman to say the least, Arlecchino. Actually, mm. while I was recuperating at the House of the Hearth, there was something else that really caught my attention. Oh, for fucking... Just imagine you just spilled it. Yeah, what was with that redhead kid that I just saw with the little white dress? What about, what about her? <laughs> oh no. Is that what's gonna happen? I heard that members always resolve disputes and arguments with a friendly spar, and the loser has to back down. Seems pretty cool if you ask me. Of course you would think that was cool. plenty of opportunities to hone their skills. <laughs> wow, that seems pretty badass. You get to fight pretty much every day. <laughs> Fucking child. Well, that's only a recent development. In the past, such spars weren't nearly so... friendly. The losing party would lose everything. Including their life. Oh. Is that what happened with uh, Claire V now? Oh boy. They were that high stakes? Whew, at least that's not a thing anymore. Right? Right? Well, the current atmosphere is not half bad. I'm a bit jealous, actually. You've got so many family members around you, and you even get to live with them. Having a lot of family around means dealing with a considerable amount of bickering and scheming. Once Tonya and Tusser enter their rebellious phase, I'm sure <laughs> you'll understand. Enter their rebellious phase. Also, never realized my child. I, I didn't realize child had an, a, had an earring. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. I never noticed that before. But I think most of the men in Genshin have earrings. I believe Zhongli and Baiju have one. I, I think Nublet has one too. Yeah, it's weird. It's kind of a weird design choice for Genshin, but hey, it looks cool. Just imagine. Tusser becomes obsessed with plucking out strands from the <laughs> rooster's mustache, or Tonya decides to dye her hair 42 different colors. Oh god, <laughs> that face is just like, oh god, I gotta get back home ASAP. Okay, okay, I get the picture. After conversation shifts about topics of Tony and Tusser, Child begins to share the same story. It's a type of conversation you usually leave you falling asleep, but you find me so more grateful this time. <sighs> well, would you look at the time? I should probably get going. Yeah, yeah, I also believe Toma and Risley have earrings as well. Traveler, Paimon, I'm not sure where our paths will cross next, but the next time we run into each other, we should definitely try and find some time to spar. <laughs> <laughs> um, again, maybe this is a conversation we can have when you look less like you're gonna kill over. And don't worry, I beat you up at the Golden House daily, so don't worry. Alright, alright. Well, thanks for everything, Arlecchino. No thanks necessary. You also played a part in obtaining the Gnosis. I would say we can call ourselves even. <laughs> I like the sound of that. Well, I'm off. See you all some other time. See you around, Mr. Roltwide. Um, we should probably get going too. Do you want to head back with us? Oh? You want me to leave so soon? Uh, oh no, she's on to something. <laughs> I'm rather enjoying the evening breeze. If you don't mind, I think I'll stick around for a bit. I have some things to think about. Apologies for not attending to you like a proper host. Please forgive this slight. I do hope you'll have a pleasant stay. 
<sighs> we managed to keep her distracted until nightfall. <laughs> Good thing Child was there to keep the conversation going. You don't think she suspected anything, do you? Nope, she definitely does. Oh, I wonder if Liddy ran into any issues. Let's hurry back and see how everything went. Honestly, Alakino strikes me as a kind of person to, like, know when somebody's lying. Yeah, I feel like you definitely caught up to something there. Oh? You decided to stay a little longer? <sighs> Let's take in the ocean view together, then. Sure, let's do that. Just anything to keep you here. Actually, can I go? <laughs> yeah, let me go into photo mode. <laughs> Twinsies! Actually, what poses does Alakino have? I don't know, actually. Like, her facial expressions, I mean. Serious. <laughs> Angry Alakino. And then she has pensive, which I don't know what's that about. <laughs> me enjoying- Me enjoying the scenery with my bestie. Me. <laughs> Hang on, I, uh, let me hide you out here. <laughs> I don't know why, this, this screenshot just makes me laugh. Hang on. Uh, gonna make the camera go up a bit. Go there. Yet. Me and Bestie enjoying <laughs> our time together. Hang on. <laughs> Alright, that's good. Actually, does Arkina stay in the chair until, like, I move, or does she get up eventually? I think she just stays here. It's kind of like Nahida's alt, or, yeah, idol. Yeah, she doesn't move until, like, I move. Yeah, most of the requests are, like, one to two hours long. In some cases, they're three hours long, but I think nowadays they're just, yeah, doing two-hour, like, quests now. Transfixed. Okay, let's head on back to Poisson, then. See you around, Arakino. Let the... Hopefully this doesn't spiral into... Uh, <laughs> a deadly boss fight with each other. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Alright. That was a, that was a good talk. I do hope we see Child again eventually, but, uh... Okay, Lenny, uh... Siblings, how are things going on you guys' end? Also, let me go ahead and just steal things here. Oh, Arlequin doesn't mind stealing... <laughs> me seeing some radishes. Hey, there's a gang. Lenny, how did everything go? Well, long story short, we ran into a small issue. <laughs> Claire V can't go into the sunlight. What do you mean? Everything Flashback. was fine at first. She followed me up to the surface just like I told her. But as I led her out of the shadows and into the sunlight, she vanished. Yep, she's a vampire. I turned around and there she was, standing at the edge of the shadows, silently watching me. Huh. Maybe she's afraid of sunlight, or... No, it wouldn't be her wish if that were the case. Hmm. hmm. Well, we could always try pushing her into it. Not sure pushing worked on a non-corporeal being. Oh, true. I've pretty much tried it all already. Nothing worked. Eventually, the sun went down, so all I could do was bring her back here. <sighs> How did it go with you, Lynette? Good. I've got the list. It's right here. Really? Well, what are we waiting for? Let's take a look! Uh. <laughs> oh, that's a lot of pages. Oh, it's gonna take forever to get through it all. Oh god, how many, how many people have died in this house of hearth? We can each take a section. Here. Alright. La Pouillade, L'Andois, Jean-Belle... Horror. The horror. Okay, <laughs> not not it. I mean, damn execution list as well. Like, geez, these <laughs> all these guys are dead. Landois, Daporied, Jambel. <laughs> Definitely not any of them. Oh yikes! That horror guy has a huge scar on his face. He's kind of giving Pipe on the creeps. Ah, I've met him before. The scar is from an injury he received during a mission. <laughs> I still remember him joking with me about it. 
He said any future lover would take one look at him and then lose all interest. Did he say anything else? Well, I asked if there was someone he was interested in. He said no, and that's where our conversation ended. It was only later that I learned he really did have someone he liked. He risked everything to escape so he could be with her, but... It didn't work. Oh. One day, father asked to see him. And, well... I never saw him again after that. Oh boy. I I think we can kind of, kind of assume what happened to that man. Wait, so that means the knave, she... It may seem cruel, but it's just one of the rules of the house. Seems like a shit house, honestly. <laughs> Betrayal is not to be taken lightly. We know too many secrets to come and go as we please. So, if you do try to leave, you pay with your life. As some atmosphere descends over the group as you look through the list, yeah, yeah, not here. Well, that's not too surprising. It doesn't seem like this list is complete. <laughs> It only contains records dating back around five years. Let's shift our attention then. Fremini, were you able to find anything out? <sighs> Fremini. Fremboy? Uh, uh, sorry. I was thinking about something. I managed to talk to quite a few people, but I couldn't help but notice that the atmosphere in the house was a little. strange. Strange. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, I know there have been arguments in the past. Times when people haven't gotten along. Chaplo and Filial are a good example of that. Oh, those are two of the people that we met while delivering supplies. Paimon can see how they might not get along. They had very different vibes and their, um, interests seem to be pretty different as well. That's to be expected, actually. Father brought us all here, shared her knowledge with us, taught us how to fight. That's one thing we all share. But that's also where the similarities end. Hmm. Not all of us feel the same desire to stay here. As members of the House of the Hearth, we're also considered part of the Fatui. And to a lot of people, that's an identity they never asked for. Certain members get older and realize they want something else for themselves. But considering the rules of the house, most people would never say that out loud. People like Chaplo and Foltz are loyal to Father and her vision. They're proud to be part of the Fatui. Filial and Nantoy, on the other hand, well, they aren't quite as enthusiastic. These kinds of conflicts have always been there. It's not like Father is in the dark about any of this. Well, that's true. But it just feels like things have gotten worse lately. Filial and the others... It seemed like they were meeting in secret to talk about something. Uh? I can't say for sure, but I think they've met Claire V. You think she's been inciting them to act out? No, not exactly. But I wouldn't be surprised if she said something to them about... The darkness in the house. And how deep it runs. She's told me about it before. Experiments being run on children. People being used as pawns on the battlefield without so much as the strength to survive. And they just believed all that? Without any evidence? Clarivy's words probably gave them the excuse they were looking for. Whether they actually believe them to be true is secondary. <sighs> this mm. is all because of Project Stuja, isn't it? What is Project Stuja? Can you tell? What's this Project Stuja all about, huh? This is the second time it's come up now. Sorry, but I'm not sure of the details either. Mm. I only know what Father has told us, which is that it's something the Rooster and Regrader have been working on together. Apparently, it has to do with the Fatui's strategic plan for the future. Because the House of the Hearth was so successful in obtaining the Gnosis, we now have the honor of playing a key role in Project Stuja. Honor in quotation marks again. Wait, but isn't that a good thing? Yeah, no. Key role is just another way of saying dangerous role. To us, the whole thing is an inconvenience. Father thinks so too, but she's in no position to refuse. 
Their plan isn't exactly unreasonable, and they've been funneling the house a lot of funding. It's just that... we'll lose a lot of members in the process. Participating in the plan... It's an honor in name only. What they're really trying to do is subdue us. The existence of an intelligence organization outside their control makes them feel uneasy. Looks like the Fatui are plotting something big, but given how little Lydney and the others seem to know about it, I probably won't be able to learn much. Yeah, honestly, the freaking um, Fatui don't seem to get along that well with each other. Like, Jesus, it feels like all of them are just trying to get at each other. And then there's just Chad who's just vibing. <laughs> I should keep a sharp eye out during any future dealings with the Fatui to see what I can learn. Okay, super complicated top secret Fatui business aside, what does all of this have to do with the conflicts you were talking about earlier? Paimon doesn't get the connection. External pressure has a way of exacerbating internal strife. You can't overlook the power of fear either. People are afraid of dying. And that fear is often the impetus for a lot of stupid decisions. I thought resolving the Clairvy situation would make everything go back to normal. But it looks like things are more complicated than I thought. If we leave Filial and the others to their own devices, sooner or later, Father will be forced to take action. We can only focus on one situation at a time, brother. Mm. You're right. Even if we confront Filial and the others, it won't do any good. It might even make matters worse. We should focus on Clairvy for now. Mm. Well, it's getting late. We should head back and get some rest. We'll try again first thing tomorrow. Lynette, you stick with me this time. Fremenet, keep a close eye on Filial and the others. Make sure they don't do anything they'll regret. Good work today, everyone. Have a good night, and I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Just a temporary accommodations. What do I feel like something bad is just gonna happen the moment we wake up? I just have the slight suspicion that most people are gonna like perish the moment we wake up or something. Also, up oh, Clarity is uh, no longer here. Well, yeah, Arlequino knows. I feel like she definitely knows what's going on. She, there's no way she does not. She can probably sense our lies from like, <laughs> from like the tone of our voice, and especially Paimon's voice. Hmm. Hey, goblins, welcome back to the stream. Welcome. It's been a while, man. How's it going? It's been great, man. I pulled Arkino and uh, got her weapon. Although it wasn't like the most uh, luckiest summoning session. So, I enjoy like, yeah, it, it was worth it because, like, yeah, I'm having a blast for it so far. And, yeah, right now we're doing Arlequino's story quest. <laughs> but, yeah, how's it been, goblins? It's, it's, it's been a good while. Okay, uh... Rest up September accommodations. You managed to stall until nighttime with some help from child. You wonder how things are going over in Linny's end. Well, t well, now we know. Oh boy. Yeah, let's just hope tomorrow morning we don't wake up with like a knife at our throat. Hey, thanks Goblin for the ten dollars. Th thanks. Holy shit, Goblins. I feel like you've donated like every time you've joined it on the stream, but yeah, thanks. Thanks for the donation, man. You don't really need to donate that much, but I appreciate it. Okay, uh, yeah, I don't want to delay things too long here, so yeah, we'll continue on with the story quest and see where things go from here. But yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying the story quest just so far. I'm, I'm enjoying the, like, the mystery behind everything. Take it easy. Can't wait to see how this all comes to, like, a conclusion. Oh. Wow, that text went by so quickly. What the hell? Hey, you don't think... The knave will be too angry with Linny and everyone if she finds out about all this, do you? I'm on the knave has actually killed people who betrayed the family, so... Yeah, I think not too angry is not a word we should use of her. She's even scary when she smiles. If she were to actually get angry... Ooh, you have to protect Paimon if that happens, okay, Traveler? <laughs> I'm also afraid of her. You can just hide behind me. 
I'm also afraid of her. Oh, well, in that case, we oh. should just plan on running away. We'll grab Clary? Lily and the others, and we can make a break for it as fast as we can. <laughs> uh, yeah, clearly. Where are you going? Look, look over there. Clary, what's she doing over there? Quick, let's catch up with her before anyone sees. Oh, joy. Also, yeah, where's the um, Lily, Lily and the gang? Oh boy, this is just ascending into fucking madness right now. Uh. Over there. Hey, Clary. Stop. In the name of the law. And she's disappeared again. Uh oh. Oh, where is she going? Oh, if someone sees her, we're toast. How's nobody seeing her? That's the thing. She's like walking in the middle of all these bridges. Where be? Stop and name the law. Where is she? Oh, I I I seem to have went too high. Actually, is Arlokino still there? Oh shit! I didn't mean to leave entirely. I was just checking to see if <laughs> I was checking. Yeah, I was just checking to see if she was there. Well, ah oh, fuck! Do I have to do that all over again? Ah shit! You pull for Articuno? Yippers, I still maintain Farina's best girl, and Yai yeah, is dangerous and I love her, but Articuno takes rank 3 for me. Yeah, I find Articuno super interesting. Like, I, for one, I do simp for her, but at the same time, she's like... Yeah, so meticulous and also so interesting. Like, I, I kind of wish we had more characters like this in Genshin, not gonna lie. Uh... Ah, goddamn, I have to do it all, this all over again. Okay, so yeah, it's not morning yet. If she were to actually get angry, Ooh, you have to protect Paimon if that happens, okay, traveler? <sighs> Trust is ever traveler. <laughs> look, look over there. Quick, let's catch up with her before anyone sees. Yeah, I don't know why this restarted, but okay. Clarity, stop. I'm saving for Risley and on my main, I feel Kazuha in my sub, so I might get Claran in my sub account. Over there. <clears throat> I like how she always speaks in half truths, <laughs> just for the hell of it. <laughs> yeah, true. Just the way she talks as well, and also her voice is very, very. I want. Mm. Oh, where is she going? I was gonna say pleasing to listen to. Actually, yeah, her voice is very pleasing to listen to, but also the way she talks as well is just... Yeah. You feel like she's up to something, like, nearly all the time. Which I kind of like, not gonna lie. Okay, but yeah, but we'll climb this thing th this time around. Baby? Oh, look! She stopped! Uh. Moonlight. Uh, yeah, what, what are you doing here? Shh. Uh. I opened the window while no one was looking. Look how pretty the outside is. Window? There's nothing here. If only I could have more than this. You probably think I'm being silly, huh? All this hopeless resisting? It's better to dream of what I could have than try to make it a reality, right? Please. Help us get on the same page here, Clary. <laughs> we need you to tell us what you know. Can you do that? I love how she said that. Please, get us on the same page here. <laughs> she's just, uh, I feel like she, internally she's just like, Bitch, I have no clue what you're on about. Say something that makes sense. <laughs> sure. Although, after you hear all this, I think you might regret that decision. Oh boy. Can I back out of this? <laughs> Everyone in this family is nothing more than a tool. Something to be used and exploited. We're all expendable. Including me. As long as you're useful, you get to stick around. Lose your value. And you're handed over to the doctor. Experimented on. 
and given a fate worse than death. I've seen it happen again and again, and I've Ugh. had enough. <laughs> yeah. Uh, why do people join the Fatui again? It just does not seem like a healthy working environment. Jeez, like hand over to the fucking doctor? Uh, Jesus. You're saying the knave did all that? It's just, that doesn't seem like something she would do. Uh, she's scary and all, but it seems like even she has lines she wouldn't cross. The previous knave, probably. Yeah, she's probably talking about the previous knave, not our Arlequino knave. Huh. I knew you wouldn't believe me. Everyone thinks she's a good person. They all think of her like a real mother. Mother? Ah, uh, then there it is. Yeah, they call her father. But she doesn't deserve that title. She's disgraced it and tarnished it. And if I had things my way, I'd never see her again. If only Perry were here, she'd understand. Perry? There's that name again. Also, Paimon's getting a strange feeling. It almost feels like she's not really here with us. Hmm. Paimon can't tell if she's actually talking to us or if she's mistaken us for someone else. I'm not sure either. She's a spirit. It could be anything. Hmm. What do you think about Articino's quest so far? <laughs> Excuse me. That's the news there. <laughs> do you think Claire is telling the truth or is there something more going on? I feel like because I watched the animated short, I feel like she's talking about the old knave, the one Arlequino personally killed, and not our current knave. Although I still think this Arlequino does kill people. I think they're, yeah, what Paimon said. I don't think there's lines she would cross. At least I don't believe so. Hmm. Mm, well, in any case, it seems like she really needs someone to talk to. We should keep her company for a little longer. She looks so young. But it seems like she's been through a lot. Uh, it's getting windy. I should close the window. Ooh, look at the moon. Isn't it pretty? Hey, wanna hear a secret? I heard that if you look up at the night sky in Shnezhnaya, you can see the aurora. Aurora Borealis. It's supposed to be super pretty. Even prettier than the moon tonight. I'd love to see it. Perry and I promised each other that once we're older, we're gonna go see it together. Oh boy. <laughs> but I can't find her. I'm worried she's also been... No, that wouldn't happen to her. She's special. Mother likes her a lot. I should really go talk to Mother. But we just fought. She doesn't want to see me. And I'm too scared to face her. What should I do? After some time, Clary comes back to herself. She gives a weak <sighs> smile and goes back. Everyone really doesn't understand what's going on with her. Well, let's head back. We've got an early morning tomorrow. The night passes by as a uh, dread just shivers down right. my spine. Looks like we're all here. Let's go ahead with the plan. Before we do that, I have a question. Oh? What is it? Have the Nave and the Doctor ever worked together? What makes you ask that? We kind of ran into Clairview last night, and that's what she told us. We met the doctor back in Sumeru. He's uh -huh. super dangerous, and he's done all sorts of bad things. He's probably like, yeah, probably the most fucked up individual out of all the Fatui Harbingers, I think. It's possible that Father and the doctor have had certain dealings, but I don't think Father would work with him. We're not really on the same side, so there's not a lot of trust between them. Right. That doesn't exactly set the stage for a successful partnership. I did hear, though, that when Father first became a Harbinger, the Doctor offered to work with the House of the Hearth. Father rejected most of his proposals, except for one. Hmm. It had to do with some sort of secret experiment. Secret experiment? Could that be what Clairvy was talking about? Hmm... I don't think so. I don't know any details about the experiment itself, but I do know it's an entirely independent operation. The doctor only proposed a direction for the research. That was the extent of his involvement. I still don't think that counts as working together. 
The details of the experiment are confidential, but complete records are kept on all participants. That doesn't seem to be the case with the situation Clairvy referred to. I know you don't agree with some of the Fatui's methods, and I'm not asking you to. But I am asking you to trust us on this. The House of the Hearth has its own principles. Oh. There are certain lines we're not willing to cross. <laughs> I love how all of them have like their hand on their chest. <laughs> <sighs> Alright, that's good to hear at least. Clarvy seems to think the knave and the doctor worked together to do something horrible. Previous knave. If that turned out to be true, Paimon doesn't know how we would even face you guys. <laughs> Paimon, did you not see the animated short? Come on now. <laughs> it's just that it doesn't seem like Clarvy is lying either. The easiest thing to do would be just ask the knave directly, but... Paimon doesn't think she'd tell us. Let's focus on the plan for now. Father didn't come back last night. She's probably still near the shore. We'll be counting on you to distract her. Lynette, you're with me. Fremenet, you know what to do. Be on your guard, everyone. Alright, let's get to it. Let's do this. Yeah, I feel like your experience playing this quest will be very different depending on whether or not you watch this quest. If you- or no, not watch the quest, watch the animated short. Because yeah, if you've seen it, you probably know what's going on. If you haven't seen it, then all this stuff here might be a bit confusing to you. Oh, say, so hey, Clarvy's here. Oh, it's raining. I should put my clothes away. Yeah, it's raining indeed. Shooting hydro bows at you. Okay, no. <laughs> huh. Yep, and she just stands there like nothing's happening. Although she can still communicate with us for whatever reason. Take it easy. Hmm. Where are we going today? Let's try somewhere further away this time. No, oh, that's it. Okay. Uh, is Fremini somewhere nearby? I'm not seeing him anywhere. I'll talk to him if I do see him, but uh, I think right now, yeah, maybe it's nowhere around. Most of the YouTubers I watch or see have completely missed everything. Hmm. I feel like most of the YouTubers, like Genshin YouTubers I know, have seen the animated short though. Like a lot of people were hyped for it. I, I, I remember there being like a boatload of reaction videos to it. So I feel like 90% of them should know what's going on in this quest. Uh, okay, no framey boy around. Okay, let's just go uh, see father then once more. Hello there, father. Ah, oh, it's you two again. I must say, you look a bit pale. Did you have trouble sleeping last night? Uh, a little. Perhaps if you had less on your mind, you'd be able to absolve yourself of such troubles. So what are you planning to do now? Catch up on some sleep? Or should I give you some time to rack your brain for a topic to discuss before I ask any questions? Yeah. Although I must profess to being curious. Without child here, uh. how do you plan on distracting me? Uh, yeah, she knows. She knows. Us? Distract you? I'm on. Keep <laughs> your... A good one. But no. Um, we were just here for a chat. Hmm. Looks like you could have used some extra time to think. No matter. If you don't have any other plans, why don't you accompany me somewhere? Don't worry. I'll be sure to steer clear of any scheming children. Yep, she knows. <sighs> the ocean breeze is sure nice today. <laughs> Paimon's just like, yeah, man, it's a beautiful day for a walk. <laughs> what were you saying? So you know everything, then. Children always think they can hide things from the grown-ups. But nothing gets past me. Uh -huh. Least of all, a little scheming. I think I'll let them have at it for a little longer. I can be very patient. Uh, I probably should release that bird. Well, I'll leave you to think things over. If you're so inclined, meet me outside the Palais Mermonia. All the way there? Okay. Good things come to children who do as they're told. So I do hope you decide to tag along. If only for your friends' sakes. What should we do? Hmm. 
She clearly knows about everything we've been doing, and Paimon doesn't think it'd be a stretch to say she was threatening us just now. We should just release a pigeon that Lenny gave us. Fly, birdie! So where are we keeping that oh, bird? Just in our idea. pocket? <laughs> Hopefully he sees it in time. Is that a, is that bird alive? Or <laughs> I have so many questions, but nah. That's not the most important thing right now. Well, we should probably head to the Palais Mermonia. Paimon doesn't want to find out what happens if we don't show up. Based on what the knave was saying just now, it sure didn't seem like it'd be anything good. We don't really have any other options. I guess we can... All we can do is take it one step at a time. Okay, then we probably shouldn't keep her waiting. It seems like Linny and the others are on thin ice, so let's do our best to not get them in any more trouble. I agree. I feel like we could probably go down there right now and tell them that, yeah, she's on to you guys. Or, but, you know... We might as well not keep uh, our Lakino waiting. Actually, can can I actually find the gang down here? Uh, they probably despawned or something, right? Yeah, nope. I uh. Yeah, nope. <laughs> They're not there anymore. I wonder if Clairvy still here. However. Uh, no, she's gone too. Well, that's just great. Alright, so Pally Memoria we go. Don't know why we're here, though. Birds in a cage. Oh, geez, the quest name. Seeing as we still have some time before my meeting, we might as well enjoy some pleasant conversation while we wait. I'm glad to see you get along with my children. Being surrounded by good companions is necessary for a child's development. Planning on doing anything to them, are you? I assume you're referring to Lenny, Lynette, and Fremine. Uh huh. Although, there's that situation with Filial and Nentoy as well. Oh, good lord. <laughs> it appears quite a few people have been acting out lately. How much do you know? No matter. I'm not one to discriminate. All those who betray the house meet the same fate. There are no exceptions. Does that mean you're going to kill them? Oh. Are you here to beg for their lives? I'm sorry to disappoint, but the rules of the house change for no one. Mm. In my organization, everyone is responsible for their own actions. But don't you care about them at all? They really respect you. They even call you father. You must feel something for them. Any organization in which feelings come before principles is one destined for ruin. Mm. The House of the Hearth is hardly an exception. You could say our principles are more stringent than most. Perhaps I can offer you this consolation at least. As our guests, you two will not be held accountable along with them. There's really no other way to solve the, the, the issue? I would imagine Linny, Lynette, and Fremenet will be able to keep their lives. As for Filial, Nantoy, and the others, I'm afraid there's little I can do. Hmm. They can try to escape, but once you know our secrets, there's no getting out alive. Fine by me. <laughs> as long as the playable characters I know are still alive, sure, go kill those nameless NPCs. I don't care. Nah, nah. <laughs> that's so fucked up, though. Like, jeez. But, but that's, that's, that's awful. Huh. You seem concerned. Out of consideration for my guests, I suppose I could turn a blind eye for a little longer. Mm. If Linny and the others manage to dispose of Claire V in the meantime, all evidence of their wrongdoing will be lost. In that case, I could hardly punish them for something I couldn't prove. If their efforts are unsuccessful, on the other hand, all will be held accountable. And the punishment will be severe. Hmm. It's a deal, then. We'll hold you to it. Of course. Oh, and here. I believe this belongs to you. Oh. Uh, Do try and keep better track of it next time. Oh, for f Really? Oh, we're just caught up in our little web, aren't we? It takes a considerable amount of time to train a bird like this. It would be such a pity if you were to lose it. Permanently. Don't kill the birdie, please. Wait, where did you get that? Well... I'm afraid that's all the time we have to chat. Now, for the matter at hand. I asked you to meet me here because I have business at the Palais Mermonia. It has nothing to do with you, but I think it would be prudent for you to stick by my side for the time being. 
There will always be time later to run off and tell Linny what you've learned. Oh boy. Well, time to go. Looks like we wrapped things up just in time. Jeez. Now this is how you write a villain. <laughs> well, hmm. I'm not sure if I consider Arlequina like a... I'm gonna say antagonist. She's definitely the antagonist of this, uh, of this quest. <laughs> and it's, yeah, surrounding her as well, but... Jeez. She's got us all wrapped up. We can literally do nothing in this situation. Like, yeah, unless, like... Yeah. Like, if we run off, she's got probably something planned for us. If we do just literally anything, I think, yeah, she's got something planned for us as well. Also, what are we doing at Nuvolet's headquarters? Hmm. Yeah, give me this moment to read chat here first uh, before we uh, continue on. Most of you actually completely miss why Arlequino killed uh, Clairvy. Hmm. The reason is explicitly stated at the beginning of the animation. It's just a theory, so people discount it. I mean, I, hmm. Yeah, I don't really still, I still don't really understand, like, not fully anyways, why uh, Claire V was killed by Arlequino. I'm assuming they had an argument, like what um, the, the old house of her was like, and then Arlequino had to kill her to resolve, like, the argument, quote-unquote. I don't know, yeah, maybe, maybe I'll watch the animation again after this, with the new context of the, uh, of the quest, to see if that changes anything. Also, why am I going back here? Hey, give me a second. Yeah, I, I think I'll, I'll do that. I'll watch the animated short again after we're done with the um, quest here. Just with a new context, just to, just to understand everything fully. Because, yeah, I'm, I'm still not 100% sure of it, but I hope to understand it by the end of this. Alright, yeah, yeah, the mother... right. Because, yeah, the children will fight each other and kill each other to become the, the true king. And pretty much, yeah, it's kind of like... <laughs> I don't want to say it like this, but it's like a battle royale be, be, between the kids. Like, whoever's the last standing becomes the king. And then rules over the House of Hearth. But I guess I didn't... I guess uh, the old knave didn't expect to die from the last um, kid. Also, hey, and Olivia, welcome to stream, welcome. Yep, we're just uh, yeah in the middle of Arlequino Storicus right now, and holy crap, yeah, we are uh, severely fucked in all ways, manner, and directions. I have uh, no clue how the heck we're supposed to get out of this alive. Well, not alive, but out of this unfucked. Also, what the? There's just a casually a book here about Rumuria, right in the bookshelves here. Also, wait, this guy's a quest again. Oh wait, no, 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 that's not, not again. Right. I did that quest on my main account, it's just that I didn't do it, this on my alt, which is the account I'm playing on right now. Okay, I'll stop stalling. Let's, uh, actually go see our girl. Oh, I thought I was walking towards the door. <laughs> I got to move and reach at the same time. Hey, Nuvelette. Why are we here? <laughs> it's been a while, Monsieur Nervalet. Monsieur? I must say, I wasn't expecting my meeting request to be approved quite so quickly. The Palais Mermonia operates with an efficiency worthy of admiration. It is only right that an esteemed diplomat such as yourself should be afforded the proper level of respect. Although, if I may speak plainly, I must confess that I did not anticipate we would have the occasion to meet again after presenting you with the Gnosis. I see you've brought the Traveler and Paimon with you as well. If I may inquire as to the purpose of your visit. Eh, we're just here, you know, we, we're just vibing. I'll be departing Fontaine shortly. There is, however, an outstanding matter that I would like to see resolved before I go. They're <laughs> dodging the question again. It requires a rather lengthy explanation, I'm afraid. 
So I took the liberty of explaining everything in this proposal. Please review it at your leisure, Monsieur Nervelet. Yeah. Can I see? Can I have a look-see? Okay. Uh, well, oh, this is, uh, oh, I see you poured yourself some tea already. Hmm. Got the silences, sir. I understand uh, your request. However, at the risk of causing offense, I must admit that I fail to see why you would wish for such a thing. I heard you have a certain fondness for water tasting, Monsieur Nervelet. So allow me to use water as an analogy. Uh, yeah, see, that's the thing. She always speaks in riddles. <laughs> She's never, like, direct at all. A family is like a large body of water with countless rivers flowing in and out. As someone who watches over this system, I would hope that each river that flows from the source will eventually reach the ocean. Of course, objectively speaking, I know this is impossible. Most of the rivers will dry up along the way disappearing into the ground and leaving nothing but a barren riverbed behind. Not all rivers are destined to reach the ocean, but I would not see their existence rendered meaningless. I believe the water that flows within them is simply meant for a different destination, like a field in need of irrigation. Or perhaps the yeah. glass of a certain water-tasting enthusiast. Um, did you get any of that, Traveler? Not really, kind of, <laughs> sort of. Your words paint an optimistic picture, indeed. Do you understood Allow that? Me to remind you, however, few among us are willing to sip from a glass filled with tainted water. Among us. It may have been tainted at one point in time, but not to worry. I'll make sure it's strained of all impurities and returned to its cleanest form. Hmm. 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 I seem to recall there being a transactional aspect to your proposal. Perhaps you could expound on that? If you accept my proposal, Monsieur Nivellet, I will gradually withdraw my forces from Fontaine. Oh. And, unless absolutely necessary, I will no longer carry out any special missions within Fontaine. I presume I can take your words to mean that, in the future, cases similar to the Tartuffe assassination will cease to cross my desk? Uh, tar oh! Tartuffe assa- Oh! Wait a minute. Isn't that the guy Arlecchino killed <laughs> in her teaser? Hang on a minute. I, I think that- that is it. Hold up. I'm just looking it up real quick. Uh, yeah, it is. Hang on. Let me, let me bring it up here for you guys. Look at that. Look at the subtitles of this. Monsieur Tartu's body found. Yeah, this is directly referencing that. Ooh, that's kind of cool, actually. <laughs> Tartu. Ah, oh, that thief who embezzled funds from all those charities, you mean? My deepest condolences to his family, but without any evidence, I cannot imagine how the House of the Hearth might have been involved in his passing. <laughs> he had nothing to do with me, I swear. <laughs> of course, if you accept my proposal, Monsieur Nervelet, I'm sure certain measures could be taken to reduce the frequency of such troubles. You choose your words carefully, indeed. In that case, I am inclined to accept your proposal. My thanks for your generosity, Monsieur Nervelet. Well, with that settled, we should be going now. I took the liberty of bringing along two bottles of spring water from Snezhnaya for you to enjoy. I do hope I get the chance to hear your impressions. <laughs> Perhaps at our next meeting, yes? Indeed. I trust you would not overlook your commitment in the meantime. All right, Traveler Paimon, time to go. The Traveler Paimon are just sitting here just like, what is going on? What are you two <laughs> speaking about? Why are you talking in riddles? Oh, hey, Monsieur, let's talk again. 
I believe I've told you before that my emotions easily resonate with those of others. Yet in the few meetings I have had with that Harbinger, I haven't been able to sense any aspect of her emotional state. Hmm. Her mind is like a still body of water. Who knows what darkness lies in its depths, and the lack of ripples on the surface gives nothing away. It's unclear whether this is her natural state of being, or whether it's an incredible strength of will that gives her the ability to master her emotions. Either scenario, however, suggests she is a very dangerous individual. I do not expect an explanation as to why you two are by her side. Whatever your reasoning, I would only advise you to take caution. Hey, you don't need to tell me twice, Daddy. Like, never let... You didn't hear that. But interesting, she says... Okay, so... I don't remember all the lines she said, because for some reason this game just doesn't have a backlog feature, which it really should. But she said some- the one thing- the one line she said caught my attention, which is... Cleanse the- like, yeah, the untainted- uh, the tainted water, and make it, like, you know, cleanse it and whatnot. I- I'm interpreting that as she's taking the House of Earth of old and trying to make it something better. At least cleanse it from corruption. At least- that is what I think she's trying to say. Not 100% sure if that is the case, but that is my current working theory. Let's just go outside for now, and I guess we'll know. Yeah, she's comparing the house to, like, yeah, as a lake and the children as rivers. That's, yeah, that's what I picked up from that. Hi. What exactly were you talking about back there? Paimon, learn to pick up on subtext. <laughs> You mentioned some rivers, a large body of water, and then some kind of irrigation scheme. Yeah, don't worry, Paimon. We're actually it's just, just imagine. It's just yeah, we're we are working with Fontaine Industries to make a farming like place using the House of Earth. You really want to know? I would imagine there might be more pressing concerns at the moment. Just imagine all that stuff was like literal. <laughs> I can I can only imagine like so some very confused people just reading that just like what is the house of first like making a a farming like place or something like what the heck? Winnie, uh. oh, Pana really hopes everything's going okay. Good. Oh, Pana recognizes that look. You've got your ticket cap on, don't you, traveler? Um, what's me what? Is is the guy who ran by one of the House of Earth members? The name seem may seem relaxed, but she didn't seem to be joking earlier when she said those who betray the organization must pay with their lives. I think she's serious about punishing those kids. How should we stop her? No, there's something else we should figure out first. Hmm. While we were talking in front of the Pally Memoria, she mentioned Clary's name. Uh does she mean she knew Clary was this? Where Clary was this entire time? Maybe she even anticipated how Linny and the others were going to act. Hmm. Uh oh. Hey! Watch where you're going, fuckhead! Oh, shoot. Are you alright? Also, I don't remember her mentioning Clary's name. I must have looked away at chat when that happened. <laughs> oh, jeez. I'm so sorry. I was so focused on selling these papers, I wasn't looking where I was going. My bad. I also wasn't paying attention. Well, let me make it up to you at least. Here, take this paper. On the house. What the fuck? <laughs> okay, I, I gotta bump into a newspaper men more often then if I'm gonna get a free paper. <laughs> he looks kind of familiar for some reason. Yeah, he's... The House of her NPCs we saw earlier, right? I think so. Yeah, the scar. Wait. Oh, you don't have to give us anything. Wait. No, he's one of the guys on the execution list. Please, I want to. It's not like I'm short on supply. All the extras will be useless come tomorrow anyway. Yeah, um, what was his name? Herrera? Something horror? I mean, something similar to horror. Because, yeah, they, they mentioned the, the huge scar across the face. It's my fault, really. I was just trying to bring home some extra mora for the family, but I bit off more than I can chew. I haven't had many takers today, so I'm still swimming in papers. What's going on here? Uh? uh nothing much. Uh, I just ran into your friend here on accident. I should probably get going, actually, so... <laughs> bye 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 Hold on. Uh-oh. 
Um, of course, I'm happy to compensate you with Mora, it's just... I don't have any on me at the moment. I'll take three papers. Here. Your payment. Hmm. Oh! Thank you I thought you would actually payment. recognize her. May him. the Archons bless you with good fortune. If only I had the chance to run into such generous customers every day. <laughs> I should probably just take on a smaller inventory though, right? I'm getting married soon, so sometimes it's hard to not get ahead of myself. Anyway, I should head out. Goodbye! <laughs> he still sounds even... <laughs> well, now that my affairs are settled, we should take the boat back to Poisson. We've even acquired some light reading to enjoy along the way. I think I think you recognize Arlequino. He, he, his voice is trembling even after we bumped into each other. <laughs> Actually, why don't we uh, stick around for a little longer? Paimon, she knows we're distracting her. I don't think that this is going to work. Uh, Paimon just realized how hungry she is. She can't head back to Poisson on an empty stomach. Looks like Paimon's trying to buy us more time. If we had back now, Lenny and the others would have made uh, would have made any progress. Or no, I doubt Lenny and the others would have made any progress. What should we do? It appears you two are under the impression that delaying our return will somehow alter the situation in your favor. Uh-huh. I'm sorry to ruin your fantasy, but your efforts are meaningless. That being said, I could be persuaded to give Lenny some extra time. I just have one condition. If you agree to my request. I'll even answer some of your questions. Uh. You're quite curious about Claire V, are you not? Uh-huh. And my relationship to her. Wait. Why are you being so generous all of a sudden? You're not gonna ask us to do something bad, are you? You overestimate yourself. You don't have the talent for bad things. <laughs> <laughs> then what can you possibly... The most important consideration in a negotiation is that both sides receive something they want. Demands and threats only get you so far. Your condition, let's hear it. Wonderful. Here it is. Uh. When the time comes, make the choice that you deem most appropriate in the situation, and lend your help to the House of the Hearth. Very vague, but very you, Arlequino. <laughs> Sounds normal enough, but what do you mean, when the time comes? When is that supposed to be? That is for you to decide. We accept your condition. Then we have a deal. Follow me. Hmm. So, that was definitely one of the guys on the execution list, the, the, the paper boy. So... Is Execution just letting them go, like, out of the House of Hearth? Or did Arlequino somehow help in letting the guy get away without needing to kill him? Hmm. Uh, follow Arlequino to the late- Oh, here we go! I recognize this place. Yeah, that's the, uh, <laughs> the building she blew up in her animated teaser. Gonna set us back a long way. Yeah, she's gonna t tell us the story of uh, her time being there and how she uh, obliterated a whole building using her power. <laughs> how about we explore the area ahead of us? Paimon, fuck off! I'm going right there. You don't need to fucking tell me anything. Pain. No way I can get a nap in. What is this place? Yeah, this place, I blew it up. Somewhere long forgotten by everyone. It used to be a grand building. Now it's nothing more than a pile of rubble. No one comes here anymore. Nor does anyone care about what once happened here. Although, this place does have something to do with the story I'm about to tell you. It was before I became a harbinger. And before Linny and the others joined the House of the Hearth. Due to certain events, uh -huh. I first killed Clairvy and then her mother. And this is where it all happened. There we go. Now we're getting the, the juicy details about that animated teaser. You were the one that killed Clairvy? Why? Patience now. Allow me to explain Clairvy's side of the story first. I'll start from the beginning. 
Clairvy was six years old when oh, she was brought by bitch. her mother, Crusabina, to live in the house of... Crusabina? What a From name. From the outside, it seemed like a fairy tale. A thriving family made up of kind adults and friendly children. Crusabina was the knave at that time, and the house of the hearth was under her control. Hmm. She was Clairvy's mother by blood. Yeah, blood related. She was also the mother to all the children in the house. And then she just allowed that blood related... The blood related like daughter to die <laughs> claire v was happy here for a time but she quickly realized that being part of this family wasn't a fairy tale at all it was a kind of purgatory purgatory yep purgatory exactly the House of the Hearth takes in war orphans from all over to that oh boy but as for how to raise them that depends entirely on the person in charge. Crucibina came up with a novel idea. She would teach the children to fight, force them to duel each other, and then crown as the king of the house the child who proved themselves most worthy of inheriting her title. Right. We know all this from the trailer. It's difficult to estimate the number of children who died or were maimed in the process. Yeah. Huh? There's little I can say about the ones who died. The ones that emerged with permanent injuries, on the other hand, well, they still served a purpose. They would be handed over to the doctor to be experimented on. Ugh. Or sent away on dangerous missions. Ugh. Nothing more than tools to be used and then discarded. So those were the experiments Clairvy was talking about. But what actually happened to her? You said that Clairvy was Crucibina's daughter, so... If Clairvy tried to convince her to stop what she was doing, Crucibina probably would have listened, right? Uh, yeah. I think you're underestimating the kindness of this quote-unquote mother. Despite being Clairvy's mother, Crucibina cared little for her daughter. Mm -hmm. She forced Clairvy to join the House of the Hearth only as a means to demonstrate her own impartiality as a mother. To prove that she treated all her children equally. Clairvy did try to convince her mother to change her ways, but it was to no avail. Mm -hmm. After her efforts failed, the only other option was to rise up and try to fight back. Unfortunately, the other children had already been thoroughly indoctrinated into the illusion of happiness Crucibina had created. Of course, there was one exception. Someone Clairvy's age, who knew the truth about the House of the Hearth. Her name was Peruware. Peraware. Perry? Oh, that's her actual name. I think. Wait, the friend that Clary mentioned? Friend, huh? I suppose we can call her that for now. Uh-huh. Clairvy was a cheerful and passionate person with a tenacious spirit. Hmm. Peruware, on the other hand, was rather cold-blooded. Her cold-blooded nature allowed her to see through Crucibina's facade. Yet, it was also this cold-bloodedness that prevented her from acting against it. At least at first. While Clairvy longed for freedom, Peruware was convinced that, amid all the fighting and violence, she would make it until the end. Also, I gotta mention how adorable baby Arlequino is. I mean, she still has a cross eyes, <laughs> uh, but she still, I don't know, <laughs> there's something adorable about this. Despite their differences, the two became fast friends, united by their knowledge of the truth. Clairvy told Peruere that she hoped to create a real family, where no one would be killed or sacrificed. There may have been a certain naivete to her ideas, but Clairvy proved her determination many times over. She tried countless times to run away, ask for help, or expose the truth. But her efforts only earned her beating after beating. Right. The only thing that kept her going was her strength of will. Which led to the injuries you see on her throughout the throughout her teaser. Even with her body racked with pain, she would still stand on her tiptoes and open the window at night. She and Peruere would look out at the moon together. A fierce longing for freedom shining in her eyes. But one day, that light simply vanished. Oh no. What happened? Her hopelessness resulted from a culmination of things. Ten years had passed, 
Ten years worth of failure after failure. She and Peruere weren't children anymore, but finding any chance to escape still seemed as hopeless as ever. It was during this time that Peruere suggested a new plan. Mm. If escaping was out of the question, why not take down the very person sitting on top of this throne of lies? Mother herself. Claire V rejected that proposal. She claimed that, as a famous harbinger, Crucibina possessed an unimaginable amount of power. Trying to kill her would have an incredibly low chance of success. Clairvy never gave another reason, but Peruware could see it written all over her face. Clairvy still thought of Crucibina as her mother. Mm. Killing her own flesh and blood was a line she couldn't bring herself to cross. If she couldn't escape and fight back... Then only one option remained. Death. Precisely. Death was the only way that she felt she could be free. It happened during a duel. When she arrived at the dueling ring that day, her partner mm. turned out to be none other than Peruere. The very person that had stood by her side all those years. It was a fierce battle. But ultimately... Clairvy decided to let Peruware end her life. From that moment on, Peruware's journey was one written in flames. When the rain finally came and washed it all away, there she stood. The sole victor in Mother's endless game of slaughter. A trail of corpses strewn across her path to success. Yep, and then she obliterated her along the entire building. It was the very thing she had predicted ten years prior. Even then, she believed she would make it until the end. She wasn't surprised by the fact that she emerged as Mother's undisputed heir. Rather, her success left her with an inexplicable sense of restlessness. She was unsettled. And there was only one thing that could quell that sensation. Yep. Perhaps you two would like to take a guess as to what it was. Killing the person who was at the very top. Uh -huh. Correct. This is the place where Peruware killed her best friend. A mere year later, this is also the place where she fought tooth and nail to kill the mother they shared. Oh, wow. Wait, those events took one year apart from each other? I thought she immediately just went to go try and kill Crucibina as soon as... Uh... Yeah, as soon as uh she died. The moment she acted, any conception of what was right or wrong ceased to matter. It's one of the principles of the house. Only those who survive get to write the rules. Peruere won the battle. Uh -huh. And became a harbinger herself. After which her majesty, the Tsaritsa, bestowed upon her a new name. Arlecchino. Arlecchino. So the Perry Clairvy was talking about. It was you all along. Your Perrowear. Arlecchino is just a name you got later. This was your story just as much as Clairvy's. I yep. left that name behind long ago. I must say, hearing it now does bring back memories. After I defeated Crucibina, the moniker of Mother died with her. I chose to forego the title she called herself and even chose to give up my own name. I rebuilt the House of the Hearth under a new identity. Mm. Not only as Arlecchino, but as father. Wow. <laughs> she hated her so much she would never be able she would never call herself mother, but instead be Yeah, call herself father instead. That is quite the backstory for that title. Holy shit. And that is where the story ends. Any more questions? The Clary we met, though, who is she exactly? Yeah. Based on what you just told us, Clary wasn't a little kid when she was killed. So the Clary we met... Was she really a spirit at all? I suppose you could call her an illusion born of flame. Hmm. Her existence is like ashes to a fire. Something left over in the wake of blaze and ruin. You see, a certain power runs through my veins. Uh. It's not unlike a curse. 
My flames leave behind shadows of anything they consume. Right, I was gonna say this earlier regarding her power, but... I think... I just have the feeling... Because the... the it's confirmed that the Doctor and the Nave worked together at some point for, like, one experiment. At least Arlequino did. Um... Could that have been how Arlequino got her powers? Through Dottori? Because it seems like something he'd do. I could be completely wrong on this, but that's what I think. Of course. The chances of those shadows morphing into a sentient entity are exceedingly slim. Claire V is a very special case. Claire V died when she was 16 years old. But what emerged from the flames was her six-year-old self. Hmm. Her appearance wasn't the only thing affected. Most of her memories were lost to the blaze as well. Memory is a mysterious thing indeed. Losing a portion of your memories will alter your sense of self. Lose ten years' worth, however. And it would be like living in the past. Like returning to a version of yourself that... Never grew up. No wonder Paimon got such a weird feeling when we were talking to her. Perhaps I should put it this way. Claire V is someone trapped in time. It may seem like she exists with us in the present, but she truly lives in the confines of her own past. So if all of that is true, then you must have known about Claire V for a long time. Indeed. She's a rather... volatile and unstable entity. Sometimes she would look after the children. She's even saved some of their lives. But then if you knew about her this whole time, why why are you trying to deal with her now? But hmm. other times, she would hide from me and become obsessed with revealing the truth about the house to anyone who will listen. Shadows don't have the capacity to learn or grow. Any new information they encounter is quickly forgotten over time. Your attempts to expose Claire V to sunlight. They failed, yes? Uh -huh. The reason is actually quite simple. In Claire V's mind, the house is impossible to escape. And it is this very perception that traps her there. But... No matter. All I have to do is kill her again, and <laughs> all will be resolved. Okay. <laughs> I don't anticipate so much as a single speck of ash will be left behind this time. Yeah, all I have to do is just kill the, the kid. You know, no biggie. Wait! Paimon can understand why you might want her gone, but isn't there another way? So what if she's trapped in her six-year-old self? She's still your friend! At least talk to her first! It's too late for that. Mm. She broke the rules, and now she must be punished. That goes for Filial and Nantoy as well. She's had quite the effect on them. I hope you understand. The difference between Crucibina and myself lies in our formulation of the rules, not our policy for enforcing them. Upholding the rules without question is a trait we both share. Because that is how a household should be run. Hmm. Is this really what you want to do? Whoa! Traveler speaking! Hello! Whatever could you mean? Uh. Don't you want to say a proper goodbye at least? Ether speaking. Holy Whether shit. As a killer or as a father, there are two things that must be avoided at all costs. Anger and sorrow. Uh. Anger makes you impulsive. Sorrow causes you to waver. Well, it appears it's about time to proceed. Before we arrived, I told some of my well-behaved children to bring our troublemakers here by nightfall. Uh-oh. I do believe I've kept my end of the deal. I give your friends quite a bit more time. As for what happens now, we'll just have to wait and see. Oh boy. Oh, we're gonna fight here, aren't we? Here they are, father. Oh boy, everybody's here. Oh, you gonna execute them? Seeing something like that would actually be a first for me. Why are you excited about that? Lenny! Claire V. I'm sorry. I heard about how you helped buy us more time, but I still failed. I couldn't find a way to fulfill her wish. Huh? Yeah. Are you... Perry? Indeed, it's been a while, Claire V. Perry! Oh. Shh, stay right there. 
I'm sorry to postpone our reunion, but first, I believe certain scores need settling. Oh boy. Cutscene? Oh, shit. Oh, I thought I was gonna go to a cutscene. Uh oh. Father, let me explain. Out of my way. Father! You chose to conceal a threat to the house. And for that, you must be punished. Overall, however, I suppose your wrongdoing is hardly the most egregious of the bunch, so I'll deal with your punishments later. Oh, shit. As for right now, the more pressing concerns are the traitors among us. Among us. By traitors? Do you mean us? Father, let me explain. We didn't mean to- Fultz, why don't you share what you heard? Ah, uh, shit. Snitch! Yes, Father. Secret Midnight Meeting Number Three. Participants: Filial, Nantoy, Sato, Toddy. Nantoy clearly said, "If only Father wasn't the one who took us in." Uh oh. Sato added, "I'm sick of this life. I just want to live as a normal person." Filial was the worst of them all. She called us crazies and said a bunch of mean things about Father. Oh uh, boy. I did not. Nope, he definitely did. You're, you're lying. Fultz is trying to frame us. Nah, I think that kid's loyal to a fault. It's not like I'm the only one who heard those things. After that, you and Toddy and a bunch of other people started talking about Clairvy. You were using all those things Clairvy brought up as an excuse to question Father. We're birds locked in a cage. The only way out is to destroy it. That's what you said. Oh, you? fucking snitch kid. You little. You just want me gone, don't you? What did I ever do to you, huh? And you, Shaplo, have you forgotten who stood by your sickbed, watched over you, and changed your dressings? Come on, let's hear it then. What's your reason for all this? Uh, <sighs> You're wrong, Filial. Uh. We don't want you to die. You're our family. Liar. You wouldn't be doing this if that were the case. So why? Why have you backed us into a corner? We all live in the House of the Hearth. You know the type of work we do, Filial. A single betrayal can cost dozens of us our lives. It's not like it's never happened before. That kind of thing is hard to forget. That's why the House of the Hearth cannot tolerate any form of betrayal. Ever since we came to Poisson, you've had seven secret meetings. A lot of the things you talked about really crossed the line. You've been spying on us for half a month? Wait a second. Now that I think about it, the move to Poisson was just a way to make it easier to spy on us, wasn't it? Because we were all in one place! You've had this planned all along! Filial... Nantoy... I'm sorry. Yeah, are we actually about to watch these guys die? I owe you both my life. I owe Claire V too. If it weren't for all your help after I got poisoned, I wouldn't be standing here today. If this were any other situation, I would do anything to repay that kindness, even if it cost me my life. But... <sighs> rules are rules. I'm sorry. My hands are tied. Why? <laughs> Why? That's enough, Filial. We made a mistake. And we should own up to it. We broke the rules. Plain and simple. And now we have to face the consequences. I'm sorry, Shaplo. Fultz. I'm sorry, Father. We... accept our punishment. Shaplo, according to the rules of the House of the Hearth, how should these traitors be punished? Uh. Death? Or have the rules changed? All those who betray the house pay with their lives. And so it shall be. Uh-oh. <laughs> Shit. Father, please wait! Something you want to say, Linny. Please reconsider, Father. What Filial and the others did... Does it really count as betrayal? We all come from broken families. From the very first day we joined the House of the Hearth, we wanted nothing more than to make it a real home. Mm -hmm. But the truth is, 
None of us know what a real home should look like. I'm not saying I have all the answers. All I know is this. Killing Filial and the others may uphold the rules, but doing so will only bring us further away from being a real family than we've ever been. So please, Father. Please, reconsider. I agree with Linny. Oh, boy. Father, please. Linny, you... I also agree with Linny. <sighs> An order once given cannot be rescinded. However, given the extent of your determination, <laughs> I suppose oh, shit. we shall have to go about this a different way. Draw your weapons and face me. Here we go. Our weapons? Father, are you referring to a duel? Precisely. The rules of the house will not be altered. Traitors must be punished. However, resolving disputes with a duel is also one of our rules. One that also <laughs> oh, applies to me. Demonstrate a sufficient showing of strength, and I shall offer a concession. Wait. Beat. Father in a duel? Trial by combat, yep. Father is way too strong. Even for Lenny. <laughs> yep, let's do this. Let's go. <laughs> no words need to be said. Yeah. Lenny and the others have to duel the knave. What should we do? Can they really win something like that? Can I participate? If they lose, those people from the house are really going to be executed. Hey, are you listening? Is executing them really what she wants? I don't do think so, honestly. Want to say a proper goodbye at least? She's never. Yeah, she just asked. That's what I've noticed. She just asked, what are the rules? And the other guy just said, yeah, they need to pay with their lives. Arlequino didn't say, like, correct or anything of the sort. Unless I missed it, but... Hmm. I don't think she wants him dead. Anger makes you impulsive. Sorrow causes you to waver. Back then, she never actually answered my question. But that makes the answer pretty obvious, doesn't it? She does care, yeah. Oh. Looking at that expression on her face, she seems really serious about this. Guess that means there's no chance she's throwing the duel on purpose, huh? Uh-huh. Also, she's gonna be using her pyro vision, and I think her pyro delusion as well, as if that's not enough pyro, but... Here we go. There's no way that the navel lose on purpose, although... When guests are around, families are often on their best behavior. And any disputes are less likely to escalate. When the time comes, make the choice that you deem most appropriate in the situation, and lend your help to the House of the Hearth. Mm hmm What's wrong, Traveler? Hey, where are you going? We're joining in. What do you? What do you mean, Traveler? I'd like to see for myself what the four of the three harbingers can do. You're <laughs> asking to join the duel against the knave? Fuck yeah. I mean, I've killed, I've like been three already. Let's make a fourth one. If that's okay. I'll allow it. We do have a ready-made dueling ring at our disposal, after all. <laughs> right where it all began. All I would advise is this. Keep a firm grasp on your weapon. Oh, and give it your all. Any less. And you may just lose your life. Is she like lifting the whole arena? Oh, shit. Oh, <laughs> We're in a domain now, even though we're outside, but okay. <gasps> oh, shit. Oh. <laughs> Let us begin. Also, the arena is very different. Closer now. <laughs> whoa, whoa, okay. Honestly, what I want to see... I want to see what she can do. With these rising flames. Whoa. Ram. Also, wait, what's that? What's that over there? Yeah, there's uh, like these little things like around Spare the place. Running is of little use. I'm not running, Arlequina. I'm just looking around. 
I want to see. Okay, she's Progress gotta have like multiple phases, right? Whoa! Holy shit! Oh wait, the other's actually helping. Let's go. I'll face myself. Yeah. Arlequino versus Arlequino. Let's do this. Now that's more like it. God, she's tanky. Uh, where'd you go? Oh, you in the middle. With the fall of darkness. Oh shit. Destruction shall rise. Oh, there's the wing. Have a taste of At the creating a bottle of life, you next to oh. Oh, okay. Right. I think you get buff if you uh you do a charge attack wall with a bond of life. But you know, you can't heal. Energy. Running is a Whoa! <laughs> Her moveset is fucking insane. My stars. Yeah, she, okay, let's let's just proceed things along Who here. Like a bunch of helpless <laughs> oh shit. Oh okay, didn't get hit, thankfully. Try to pace yourself. Whoa! Whoa! Her moveset is fucking bananas! I love this, honestly. Also, the music as well. Let's light it up. Yeah, sorry, forgive me if I'm stalling the fight. Oh, she can mark me too. Of course she can. Okay, so that's how you stop that. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Whoa! With these rising flames. Yeah, once again, forgive me if I'm stalling the fight. I just want to see her full moveset. And also, you know, who listen to the music as well. Yeah, let me get rid of this bond of life. Okay, don't kill my Alakino, please. Oh, okay. I think this second phase time. Yeah, the kids are also watching too. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> Two wings now. Oh holy shit! <laughs> Arlequino, what are you doing? <laughs> oh god! Cinder of two worlds, flame, Paraware. <laughs> Oh my god, the fucking spider, like, legs as well. <laughs> Let's fucking go. Oh, she has two? She's two wielding, boys! Holy shit! Okay, I don't want to end the fight too quickly now. I want to see... Oh, they're actually helping! <laughs> That's very cool. Wow, the, okay, the music. I want to hear the music of this fight as well. Yeah. Oh, wow, she's already at half HP. Yeah. Yeah, I'm keeping a watch out, all right? Oh, what are you doing? Whoa, oh, ah, no. Go away with your laser cannon. Whoa, this music! Oh. Oh, it's over. I'm gonna listen to that in full when we fight her again. Whoa! Anime fucking fight! Oh god, she's such a badass! You should know better than to crowd in one place. Uh oh. Ah, oh, shit. Holy shit! How the fuck did they survive that? Oh god. Oh, I know. Now! Oh, oh, big brain! They were just illusions. <laughs> I'm sorry, father. Oh my. <laughs> Holy! <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Sorry for what? This pitiful excuse for an attack. <laughs> God, she is so fucking badass. Uh-oh. Whoa, whoa! Holy shit! Okay, this might be a bit much, you know? Jesus. Oh, uh-oh. Ugh, Traveler, stop me saying that don't bleed! <laughs> okay. You made it out, did you? You and me, 1v1. <laughs> right now. You're stronger than I expected. Uh-oh. Whoa. Whoa! Domain expansion! <laughs> what the heck? I can't move. Holy shit! <laughs> She's like ten times more frightening than, than Ryan Shogun. <laughs> Still, not strong enough to beat me. <laughs> yeah, I, I knew nobody was gonna die, but but holy shit! <laughs> what a fucking fight! Oh my goodness. <laughs> Man, I... Ah. <laughs> uh. I believe we can end things here. It's not often that we get to enjoy the company of guests, after all. We wouldn't want things to get too out of hand. <laughs> that was a fucking cool-ass fight. Holy shit. And... Man. This- I think this canonically means Traveler cannot beat Arlequino 1v1. I mean, we've been Signora, Scaramouche, and Child, but... We actually lost- like, canonically lost the fight against Arlequino. That is insane. <laughs> Man, I really want that, like, her boss forms to be like a skin. I don't care how much I have to pay for it. I would gladly have Arlo. Actually, I can't pay. This is my F2P account. <laughs> but I would gladly love an Arlequino skin with like the black outfit of hers. Brother, are you all right? Lenny. Given that I am the victor of this duel, uh. as agreed, the punishment stands. No. I never thought things would end like this. However. Everyone involved in the duel demonstrated a remarkable level of strength and determination. In light of this, I'm prepared to change the method of execution. Elwar, the bottled flames I gave you for safekeeping. Yeah. Do you still have them? E yes I wasn't sure what they were for, but I've kept them super safe. I didn't lose a single one. Wonderful. Then... In just a moment, I'll have you administer them. Bottled flames? Indeed. They're the product of a secret experiment. Uh. Under certain special circumstances, flames can be extracted from my person and preserved. Oh, wait. Flames can be extracted from my person and preserved? Or suggested. Searing pain will spread across every inch of your body. Oh. No harm will come to you physically, but your memories will be burned away. That's the execution she's talking about. It all makes sense now. She, yeah, she, she's literally erasing them from the house of Hearth, executing them, but not killing them necessarily. If you can withstand the pain, when you awake, you'll have forgotten everything you know about the house of the Hearth. And will be expelled from the organization. In other words, administering this concoction will kill the version of you that grew up in the okay. house and give you a new identity. <laughs> there could have been better phrasing for that word, but okay. So technically, killing that their house of her cells, but re being reborn in a sense as a new person. 
So that means the young man I thought looked familiar, the one selling newspapers outside the Palais Memoria, he must have been the same horror we saw on the list of executions. Yep, he wasn't killed at all. Memory is a mysterious thing indeed. Yeah, uh huh. A portion of your memories will alter your sense of self. No, if my understanding of the knave is right, she really thinks that of. She really thinks that of killing him. The horror that lived in the House of Hearth is dead. The one that remains is simply a normal person living out his life with his beloved. Even so, it's much better than actually ending their lives. So, you're just letting us go, Father? You misunderstand. Memories are extremely important. Once consumed by flame, the version of you standing before me will die. And our secrets will die with you. Mm. So no, I don't intend to just let you go. Because the person who survives will be nothing but a stranger. Even so... Even so... I won't have to live in fear anymore. I'm sorry, Father. I'm sorry I let you down. But I... I really... Don't cry, Filial. You haven't left the house yet, so there are still rules to be followed, yes? Remember what I taught you. <laughs> Anger makes you impulsive, sorrow causes you to waver. Don't let yourself be controlled by your emotions. Of course. I'll remember. Dry your tears, and go pursue the life you really want. <laughs> and hopefully your body can withstand the burning sensation within. Yes, Father. Chapleau, Foltz, Elwar. Take them back to Poisson. And bring Lenny and the others as well. I prepared three extra vials of bottled flames. Oh. As for whether to take them, the choice is yours. Oh. Goodbye, children. The next time we meet, I will no longer be your father. Thank you for all you've done for the house. Aww. I hope you have bright futures ahead of you. Yeah, honestly, I think my head headcanon is right about Arlequino. Like, she's actually a nice person at heart. Well, like, nice in quotation marks. But she's just, she just has a really indirect way of, like, speaking that it just seems, it just seems evil. <laughs> it reminds me of like, that one skit of, like, that one, of, like, a hero who is, like, trying to do, do good things, <laughs> but has, like, a very evil tone about them. <laughs> but I wouldn't really call Arlequino a hero, per se. I think, while, it, while this is better than, um... Like, actually killing them. I think, uh, yeah, there's somewhat of, uh, humanity that still resides within her. Let's go. Yeah, it's like the Men in Black device. <laughs> Almost. Here, grab my arm, Linny. I'll help you walk back. Also, interestingly, offered Linny, Lynette, and Framine, like, bottles, too. So they could, like, erase, like, whatever House of Earth connections they have. I think they're gonna refuse, so I think. Yeah, I think they're gonna refuse and stay in the house of her with their preserved memories. Yeah, I feel like Arlequina just likes fucking with people. She she just like it, she just enjoys, like what what she said earlier. She enjoys when people has mis, uh, yeah, she enjoys when people have misconceptions about her. So I think she's just like enjoys fucking with people to make uh, others think she's evil. When she really, when in reality, she's not. Yeah. Thank you. God, though, that boss fight fucking rocked. Uh, but what happens? Yeah, what happens with uh, Claire V now? The. Uh, you gonna show us what happened? Game? Oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> Can we talk now? I've been waiting for a super long time. You really are Perry, aren't you? I haven't seen you in so long. How come you're all grown up? Wait, did I somehow travel to the future on accident? Or am I dreaming? <laughs> what a long dream. Neither. You died, Clarvy. That's what happened. You could have at least 
sugarcoated it a little. Dick. Look, she said speechless. <laughs> if this is really Clary's younger self, then I would probably... I would say she probably had enough lies. But, yeah. Oh. Okay, then. Huh? That's it? You accepted it just like that? Yep. If that's what Perry says happened, then I believe her. Perry wouldn't lie to me. <laughs> Plus, I, I still really find it funny that she's being called like Perry. This. I'm more curious about what happens in the future. If you're a harbinger now, Perry, that means Mother is gone, isn't she? Can you tell me about it? I want to know what happened to her. And to me. You never stopped trying to defy fate. At first, no one believed you. You could only vent your frustrations to the moon. In fact, you often sought comfort in the night sky. You wanted to see the Aurora, so one night we promised each other we would go to Snezhnaya to see it together. Later on, you tried to run away, but you were brought back each time. Mother spared your life, but it wasn't out of kindness. Instead, she decided to make an example of you by slowly torturing you over time. That way, the other children would know what happens to traitors. Still, you never gave up. Mother hoped that through ruthless duel after ruthless duel, she would be able to crown an ultimate victor among the children she raised. But you called on everyone to unite, to fight to a draw in order to reduce casualties. Your efforts may have only delayed the inevitable, but still. You gave them hope. You tried everything you could think of, but every attempt ended in failure. Still, you never turned your sword on Crucibina, and you never turned it on me. On that gloomy day, you told me, for the last sixteen years of my life I've done everything I can to fight for freedom. But now... I realize that the only freedom I truly possess is the freedom to choose to die. I never imagined I would say something like that. Mm. I must have been feeling really worn down. But somehow, I still think I understand. According to Mother's plan, only one of us was going to make it until the end. And I always hoped that person would be you. If I could do it all over again... I still don't think I would make a different choice. Even when I first met you, I knew you'd be able to do what I couldn't. Is that so? Even now, I'm not sure I truly understand what kind of freedom you were trying to pursue. But as the head of the House of the Hearth, and as the children's father, I've tried to give them the most basic of freedoms. The freedom to choose their own fate. It's something I discussed with the Udex of Fontaine. The children who want to leave the house will have their memories wiped clean of all secrets pertaining to the organization. Oh. In return, they will be allowed to live a normal life in Fontaine without being prosecuted for their past. That's what the agreement with Nubelet's all about. <laughs> of course, I won't simply. And also, get the cleansing part and everything. Yeah. They have to fight for it and prove themselves worthy of it. Only freedom that is earned has true value. That's more than enough. That's exactly the kind of life I was fighting for. You know, Perry? I think you're a pretty amazing king. And a really great father, too. I'm really happy that you're the one who took over the house. I guess I do have one regret, though. I still haven't seen the outside world. Well, it just so happens that our dear guests over here have been to many nations and traveled to countless places. <laughs> Perhaps they would be willing to tell you what the outside world is like. Really? Of course! We've traveled all over the place! We've got so many stories, we could probably talk your ears off for three days straight! <laughs> yeah. Talk about uh, the Animo, the Land of Animo, the Land of Geo, the Land of Electro, the Land of Dendro. Hmm. I feel like she liked Mondstadt. I mean, she, she's all about freedom anyway, so she probably liked Mondstadt. You know, I used to dream of being a bard. Oh god, don't become one. <laughs> don't become a drunkard bard. Playing the lute while singing into the winds of freedom? <laughs> Even if there was no one there to listen, 
I would have continued to sing no matter what. I'll get to talk about all of them. Okay, let's go in order here. Uh, Leeway. Ah, that's where Mora comes from. I never knew that before. If I had some Mora, I would buy three new dresses. One for me, one for Perry, and one for Mother. God, you really still do care about your mother, even after all the shit she's in, huh? It's just too bad Perry doesn't like wearing dresses. <laughs> and Mother? Well, she probably wouldn't accept something like that either. Hey, <laughs> I guess I just have to keep them all for me then. I could wear a different one every day. God, what would Arlequino in a dress even look like? <laughs> like, I can't imagine. Uh, let's talk about the line of Electro. Oh, hi, okay. We're gonna go, um, uh, Fontaine last. Those yokai you mentioned, what do they look like? Well, there's this one with the giant horns who is loud and obnoxious. There's this one with the uh, tengu wings who barely shows up in anything. And there's also a, a cat girl and a dog boy. And there's many other things. I once saw a drawing of this one guy with horns on his head and a super scary face. Are there any yokai like that? Uh, yeah, there's a guy with horns on his head, but he's the opposite of scary. <laughs> oh, sounds like you're talking about an oni. Yeah? <laughs> yep, we've met one, and let Paimon tell you, they're not nearly as scary as they look. Talk about the land of Dendro. I was always too afraid to skip Mother's fighting lessons. But at the Academia, I bet you could do all sorts of secret things in class. Things that have nothing to do with studying. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Being able to study whatever you want without having to fear for your life actually sounds pretty great. And last but not least, yep, Fontaine. The nation which she once called home. The situation was super dangerous. Lenny and Lynette were accused of committing a crime. And they were going to have to stand trial at the Opera Epiclaz. But luckily, through my skills at Ace Attorney, we saved them. Oh no. That must have been hard for all of you. What happened next? I love how Arlequino's just watching us, by the way. She's not, like, even <laughs> trying to join in on the conversation. Don't worry. We were able to turn the situation around super quickly. Go, go. All thanks to Detective Paimon, of course. <laughs> I forgot she had those glasses. <laughs> How'd you do that? Come on, tell me. Ahem. Okay, so it was like this. After the failed magic show, we rushed to the scene and... Flavory is listening uh, really intently to Paimon's story about our time in Fontaine. She seems really happy, like all her troubles have just been forgotten. Maybe this is the first time she's ever uh, been able to truly relax, but I'm not sure how long this moment can last. Shadows don't have the capacity to learn or grow. Any new information they encounter is quickly forgotten over time. As time passes, she'll probably forget about everything we told her and go back to being that scared little girl who can only hide in shadows. Huh. I was so busy thinking I almost didn't notice. The sun has risen. Holy shit, it's been that long. <laughs> Ooh, cutscene. Clairvy. Huh? You've worked tirelessly from the shadows to overthrow the House of the Hearth. Now, by my authority as the Knave, I shall announce how this matter ends. You are hereby expelled from the House of the Hearth. You are no longer tied to this place, nor are you bound by its rules. <sighs> You're saying that I can finally leave? Ah. Uh. I... To experience the outside world as well? Huh? Oh. oh, I almost forgot. Uh, There's no good mother for me. Yeah. Uh. Still, seeing who you grew up to be makes me really happy, Paraware. Oh. Take care of yourself. Goodbye. May we meet again someday. Aww. Wow. This is what this was a fucking great story quest. Holy shit. Man. I almost want to call this the best story quest. Actually, it might just be, honestly. 
It, it, yeah, wow, it's so good. She was so I'll scared. leave it to my... Mama didn't even get to finish her story. Yeah. I'll, I'll save my thoughts to the end of the quest, but yeah. I also have certain sentiments left unsaid. I wanted to tell her that the aurora I saw in Snezhnaya was just as beautiful as the ones in the pictures. But a shadow's memories reset at dawn. Had we delayed any longer, we wouldn't have had the time to say goodbye. Whatever regrets may linger. Let them be lost to the coming of a new day. Uh. Father? <coughs> uh, <laughs> guess is back. It's Let's go check it out. Yeah, not coming, Arlokino? <laughs> nah, I'm probably still thinking about Clarvy. Never mind, she's here. <laughs> Father, the bottled flames have been administered. Filio and the others have left the house. And you? What have you decided? He's gonna stay, isn't he? <clears throat> Thank you for giving us that choice, Father. But yep. we never wanted to leave the house. It's the only home we've ever known. Lynette and Fremine feel the same way. They're recuperating back at the Hotel Bouffe d'Ete. But I decided to come back and tell you where we stood. I'm sure you're well aware of the expectations I have for you. I want you to follow in my footsteps and become the next king of the house. Uh-huh. Yet you seem to have different ideas. I must admit, I'm rather surprised by your decision to stay. There's nothing wrong with choosing to live a quiet life. Leading this organization is a heavy responsibility. One not so easily carried by someone forced onto the throne. I just... Never understood what you saw in me. What made you believe I was deserving of that throne? You're brave, talented, and most importantly, you cherish your family. You would do anything to protect them, even if it costs you your life. <laughs> oh, flashback. Speaking up back there was so brave of you, Linny. It's all thanks to you that we were able to convince Father to back down. You're a hero, Linny. Hero? Father is the real hero. I mean, she's the one who chose not to kill us. <laughs> Father gone all out during the duel. There's no way I would have walked away with my life. She must have had it all planned from the beginning. From the very moment she suggested a duel. I'm not deserving of that title. I'm not strong enough or smart enough. You're wrong. Yeah. In my opinion, all you need to be deserving of the throne is conviction and the necessary strength to act on it. We may have different ideas of what it means to be a family, but you can hardly be said to lack conviction. What you truly lack is strength. For someone of your talent, though, that's something that will come with time. Even without that strength, you still chose to face me in a duel, even though the odds were stacked against you. That capacity to honor your convictions is what I truly see in you. Man. <laughs> yeah, Arlequino really does care about a lot about the family, doesn't it? I mean, doesn't she? It does make you want to... <laughs> I do want to see it, though. Like, Linny becoming, like, the next knave. Or the, yeah, the next uh, father of the House of Hearth. Part of me kind of wishes for, like, a time skip arc in Genshin now. For, like, to see, like, all these previous characters, like, grown up and whatnot. I, I think they did that with, um, Honkai 3rd, because you... I think you get a, an older Brawny and older other characters at some point. I kind of wish they, uh, at some point they would do this, do that for Genshin, like a time skip arc. Then we just get to see everybody like grown up and all and whatnot. Man, yeah, I wonder how like a, a harbinger Linny would look like. Father, no one knows what the future holds, 
what tragedy or triumph may be in store. Being at the head of this organization requires the strength of will to face whatever comes. Caution will only hold you back. If reaching a certain standard were required to go after what you want, I would never have succeeded in killing my predecessor. Back then, there was still a considerable gap between our abilities. Strength may decide the ultimate victor, but those who let a lack of strength dictate their decisions or undermine their convictions will never be worthy of the throne. I understand, Father. Thank you. Children must grow up to surpass their parents. Only then can a family continue to flourish. The road ahead is not an easy one, so I'll ask you one last time. Are you certain you want to stay? You've done so much for me, Father, and that kindness must be repaid. Plus, with Project Stuja at hand, there are many dangers ahead, and I, for one, don't intend to back down. Protecting my family at all costs. That's my conviction. Then you're welcome to stay. As for Project Stuja, you need not be too concerned. If those cowardly businessmen and heartless dignitaries try to take us down, I'm prepared to teach them a lesson. Having members who longed for the light was our organization's last weakness. With those members no longer among our ranks, the House of the Hearth is like a spider hiding in the shadows. Ah. <laughs> we need only wait for our prey to come to us. At present, our imperative is to use their plan to our advantage. Oh. In doing so, a crimson moon shall rise amid the frigid blizzards of winter. No demonstration of loyalty shall go unrewarded, and no sacrifice shall be in vain. As for the two of you, whether we meet again as friend or foe, I'll remember the camaraderie we shared in this moment. No matter how arduous the journey ahead, I hope we both reach our desired destination. I hope so too. Man, wow, the quest isn't over yet? I thought that would be the perfect ending to the quest. But holy shit, is it, is it so good so far? <laughs> Yeah, she really does care about her family. It's just that she has to put up, like, an evil front. <laughs> just to, I guess, make sure nobody can sense out their weaknesses. Yeah. I'll say Arlecchino. Uh, can I... Let me go ahead and beat up your uh, kid real quick. If you don't mind. I need a... <laughs> yeah, don't mind me, Arlecchino. I just need their mats to uh, get Layla's weapon up. Gotcha. Yeah, sorry. Uh, I just saw this enemy here and I just thought I needed like their materials. We'll get back to the quest shortly, but man, was it so, so good. Fuck. Well, that's how the story quest ends, folks. All Kino died on the way back to the house of hearths. Fucking, I hate these boss enemies so much, man. <laughs> Hold up a minute. Let me go heal, like, you know. Yeah, I need to make Layla's shield stronger. I gotta farm for that talent, like, right away. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll probably, like, fight them again later on. Okay, wait till two days later. Yeah, she did put her pat- yeah, put her pass ban and, uh, yeah. Took care of the rest of the- of the family. And, yeah, she didn't, uh, well, she, yeah, accepted those who wanted to leave, and, uh, yeah, now I think yeah, wh I really want to know what's gonna what's gonna go on with the project uh, Stuja though. Like, is she gonna do something against um, Rooster and Regrader? Like, <laughs> whatever happens, cause that'd be something to see, and I, I do want to oh, see did that. You say that Lynette and Fremine were recovering at the Hotel Booth de Tay? Oh, Paimon wonders how they're doing. Maybe we should go check on them. <laughs> Yeah, honestly, I should use Venti against those enemies. <laughs> they need to be, like, crowd control into oblivion. I think that's the only way to deal with them. <gasps> but alrighty, let's return to the uh, House of Hearth siblings. You guys doing okay after father beat our ass? Lynette? Fremine? How are you feeling? Much better. Whew, what a relief! What about you? Are you feeling alright? There's no need to worry, I'm bright as rain. I knew you'd come out unscathed. 
Us, on the other hand, well, we've been bedridden for two days. I couldn't even turn over. Oh, and I wanted to ask, is Claire V... gone? Uh, in a sense, yes. Linny and the other members have left Poisson and returned to the House of the Hearth. According to him, there haven't been any more sightings of a spirit roaming the house. We bid her farewell under a blanket of sunlight. Her wish has been fulfilled. Also, yeah, I did want to bring up, like... <laughs> I kind of like the contrast of, like, Arlequino being in the darkness while Claire V is in the light. Like, yeah, in, in, in the, uh, like, animated scene there. I see. I'm glad. Father came to check up on us two days ago and told us about what happened with Crusabina and Claire V. Actually, I... I've met Crusabina before. Uh? Wait, what? You've met the former Neve? Crusabina died a year after Claire V. It was during the year between their deaths that I joined the House of the Hearth. Oh, wow. In that case, he, he must have been... Actually, yeah, I believe he joined the House of Hearth earlier than Linny and Let Lynette did. Crusabina had an extremely cruel and radical way of doing things. While she was alive, the atmosphere in the house was suffocating. When I joined, though, the experiment she valued so much had already come to an end. And all the people involved, dead and injured alike, were gone. Crusabina never talked about the past with us newcomers. A couple of months after I joined, Father killed Crusabina and burned all her files. Mm. With that, the names of all the people subjected to her experiments, Claire V included, were lost to the flames, along with the painful memories they represented. Father took in Lenny and me a couple months after that, but she never mentioned anything about Crusabina or Claire V. Hmm. It really seems like something she was planning to keep to herself. The last time you talked to her, did she mention why she kept it a secret for so long? She said she didn't want us to be affected by the darkness of the past. She was worried we'd develop a false sense of gratitude towards her if we knew about it. The foundation of a family should be free of any corrupting influence. <laughs> Whatever happened in the past, it has nothing to do with who we are now. Yeah, that sounds like, sounds like something she would say. And that's what father told us in the end. But I still thanked her for everything. It was only after hearing about what Crucibina did that I finally realized how insignificant our lives could have been. The members of the house meant nothing to her. To say that she valued them in any way, even just as a tool, would probably be giving her too much credit. If father hadn't taken over the House of the Hearth, I probably would have already... Don't think about that, she saved you in the end. Father rarely brings up the fact that she saved us. She doesn't believe that being indebted to her should be what ties us together. But even if we didn't owe her anything, we would still choose to stay. Because this is our home. We may have arguments or times when we feel wronged, some people may even choose to leave. But as long as father is here, we will always have a home. Whether the path before us is bathed in sunlight or shrouded in shadow, we'll follow father wherever she chooses to go. So I wanted to say thank you for helping us make it through this crisis. Without your help, we could have lost a lot more along the way. Oh, we didn't do anything really. Just invite us back and as guests and we'll call it even. Of course. You're welcome anytime. Are Filio and Nantoy okay? What's happened with them? I actually saw them at a cafe this morning. They didn't recognize me. From what I could tell, they were drinking coffee and talking about one of the operas that started running recently. They seemed happy. If I had to take a guess, I would say they finally found the kind of life they always wished for. Ah, I wonder if I can actually go to that cafe and actually see them. Maybe I can actually. Oh, oh, we actually got a fireplace <laughs> as a furnishing in our teapot. That's pretty good. 
Man, what a quest though. What a freaking quest. God, that like yeah, that quest is so good. Might be like the best story quest of all times. And yeah, they're they're normal people now. Yeah, that was a still a really, really good story quest. Probably I, I think I'm gonna write that like probably one of my favorite story quests actually. Like Farinas was pretty good. Nuvolets I I loved. Linny and Lynette's were very good as well, and so was Navios. But I think this one like might have been like the most interesting. It like gripped me from beginning to end. It was like so so good overall. And yeah, my respect for Arlequino just kind of shot up. Honestly, I honestly thought we would get into the more darker parts of her character in this story quest, but nope. <laughs> it seems like she does have a a good head on her. It's that she, yeah, just doesn't like to go bragging it around. She prefers to keep things to herself. But alrighty, folks, that is the end of uh, yeah, Arlequino story quests. Oh, and yeah, we, yep, scatter ruins. As a commemoration for this uh, really, really good story quest, let's, uh, ooh, wait. Oh. Oh, this is where you begin the fight. Yeah, let, let, let's fight her. I want to hear that, like, battle theme again, and I also want to, um, yeah, you know, farm for her materials because, you know, Arlequino herself needs them. So, yeah, let, let's just uh, do this. Of course, I'm going to bring Arlequino along, too. And, yeah, Rising was pretty good as well. Um, the Knave uh, will apply Bond of Life to characters. After clearing a Bond of Life, will unleash a Scarlet, Night Tide, and next time they do a charge attack. Some of the Knave's attacks will consume her own HP. When these attacks hit a character, they will restore her own HP. Oh, so she can heal by hitting me. That's what was going on. The damage dealt by the attack will be increased yet more if the character already has a bond of life. Ooh, okay, so... Yeah, okay, so... What are those little creatures surrounding her? Like, what are these things? I don't think we got an answer for who those are. <laughs> afraid? Or do you not even have the courage to be afraid? Oh, I can kill them for some reason. Like, what, was she playing with, like, those, <laughs> those little things? Actually, they're all over the place. Can I? Nope, I can destroy them. Flames. Holy shit, move said. <laughs> Spare your Take energy. it easy. Running is of little use. Yeah, I, don't, I won't forget to do a signature dish. That's also one thing I want to do as well. Are the around 21, 25 by this time in the game? Yeah, I thought she would be like somewhere between 30 or something. Don't worry, Arlequino, I'm not running too far now. But yeah, let's take a moment here to like listen to the battle theme. I kind of hate this a bit muffled when you like are not fighting. Spare your energy. Running is of little use. Man, yeah, I love this battle theme, by the way. I love how I love the violins in it, and also the, the chanting. It's very cool. With these rising flames. I think we heard of, okay, we've heard of phase one theme enough, I think. So let's just go to phase two and hear the music there, because that's the one I'm looking forward to the most. I'll face myself, let's go. That's more like it. Spare your energy. Running is of little use. Uh, one wing angel time. <laughs> Have a taste of purgatory. Okay, I need a clear bond of life, then do a charge attack. So Benny heal. Who's next? With these rising flames. God, she actually comments if your character dies. Who's next? Jeez. Quietly now. Uh oh. Trapped like a bunch of helpless ants. Take it easy. God, this music fucking slaps, though. Okay, so apply Bond of Life to me, and then... Oh, right, clear it. I need to heal. And, okay, there we go. There, I have a charge attack, and then... Ah, there we go. That's how I'm supposed to do this. Teamwork is true! Busted. Have a taste of perfect. Here comes the catch. Overruled. Is it my turn now? Dun dun. Bum, dun dun. Whoa. Trapped like a bunch of helpless ants. Hey, don't talk about yourself like that. <laughs> Come on With now. These rising flames. 
Yeah, I actually think it's a bad idea to use Arlequino against herself. Well, actually, no, you can clear it with that. There we go. Right, I forgot you can clear the bottom light with her burst. Not bad. To be a worthy opponent after. Ow. Not now. Is it my turn now? Gotcha. <laughs> Look at you. Okay, sure. yeah, let's just get hit the face too now. There we go. Yeah, let's just watch this transformation one more time, just because it's cool. God, the wings. And also, yeah, the black outfit as well. So good looking. <laughs> I, I also do like the fact that we canonically lose this fight. Like, I think so far, Travel hasn't really lost a fight, per se. But yeah, this is a fight we canonically do not win. Which I find actually pretty good. <laughs> I mean, it wouldn't be, like, good storytelling if, like, we won every single battle, would it? So I'm kind of actually kind of glad we lost this fight. <laughs> Ow! This has been quietly now. My blade is all that cold. remains. Everybody stand back. Let's okay, uh, clear bond of life and then charge attack. Hey, gotcha. we got achievement for it. Nice. All right, charge. Right, I gotta heal. Ow! Whoa! Whoa! What the fuck was that attack? I just insta died. Okay, that stops her in her tracks, but what the shit? Holy mother of attacking! Oh yeah, I haven't seen this move. Whoa! 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 whoa. Hey, hey! Oh god! Oh god! Ah! Holy shit! Take it easy. The night is cold. Also, yeah, the fucking singing as well. Oh god. Woo. I love how all the harbingers have like a choir, like singing in their theme. Hey god, I wanna listen to this. Whoa, hey. Calm down. Whoa! Oh, <laughs> this music fucking slaps. <laughs> Not now. Gotcha. Your punishment made manifest. Bro, best boss theme right here. <laughs> I think. Yeah, I think best boss theme, honestly. These are about to get dicey. Sometimes it's only the beginning. Let's light it up. Lay it down. Holy shit, this theme fucking slaps! <laughs> oh shit, oh this attack again. The sun and moon have set, only ruin remains. Oh goodness. Run! Oh! Wait, what was that achievement? After the feast? I guess that's for successfully dodging her ultimate move there. Okay, I think the theme, the theme's resetting now, so we can just end the fight here. Come back here, me, so I can kill you! <laughs> she, doesn't, she doesn't even surrender, she just leaves. <laughs> She's just like, I'm satisfied with our duel, let us depart. <laughs> Bro, what a fucking absolute great boss fight. Holy shit.